moment, and I see something happening on. Well, do I? Yeah. Which which one do you want? Um, this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ray, are you on the Yeah, now I see it. Okay. Um, sound check, one, two, sound check. <laughs> sound check. Testing, one. testing. Looks good here. Yeah, yeah something yeah. happens when we talk. <coughs> yeah, we certainly can. Sound check, one, two, sound we check. We were born to talk, okay? <laughs> Which is a good thing. Okay, okay sure. No so problem at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Sound check. We one, can two, meet again. Sound check. Sound check. One, two. Yeah. Sound check. Good morning, everyone. Just a 10 minute warning, we'll get going with our first class in 10 minutes at 9.15. So if you could bring your junior calves to ringside, please. Junior calves to ringside and we'll start at 9.15. Thank you.
Attention in the barns, could we have all our junior calves to the marshalling area behind the green curtain? So junior calves to, uh, to the marshalling area behind the curtain and we'll get going in five minutes. So five minute warning for junior calves, please. If anyone's looking for a program for the show today, there's some programs on the bleachers. And we're excited to, excited to begin our Southwestern Ontario Championship Jersey Show in just five minutes. Ancaster is pleased to host this show for the first time and we're glad to kick it off again after a few year hiatus. We'd like to welcome our judge today, Kevin McGriskin. Kevin and his wife, Becky, and their children operate Kentville, Holsteins, and Jerseys in Mellicentian, Ontario, in Dufferin County. Kentville, Holsteins is a master breeder herd and they're currently milking 40 cows. Throughout his judging career, Kevin has judged multiple show, 4-H shows, county shows, and breeders' cups. When Kevin is not in the ring, he enjoys clipping and fitting cattle all over Canada, the United States, Australia, and the United Kingdom. He is proud to say that he's clipped multiple Grand and Supreme Champions at the World Dairy Expo, Royal Agricultural Winter Fair, and Dairy Week in Australia. We're also very pleased to have Kevin back as he served as our Holstein judge at the Ontario Spring Discovery this spring. Thank you, Kevin, for taking time out of your busy schedule to come today. And we're looking forward to starting our show in five minutes with the Junior Calf Class. This, uh, uh, throughout the show today, each, each class will have a $100 jackpot sponsored by different sponsors. And in our first class, the jackpot is sponsored by Royal Bank of Canada. We're excited to have the support of Ancaster Fair. It's a beautiful facility to have this show. And Ancaster Fair has provided quite a bit of prize money for the exhibitors today. In our junior classes, first place received $40, second place $30, third place $20, and all other entries $10. And uh, we'd like to thank our organizing committee today of Bev Spreel, Martina Arth, Virginia Warwick, Jeff Stevens, and Teresa Osborne.
Oh, okay. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, from Ancaster, Ontario. This is... Good morning, everyone. We're excited to have our 2022 Southwestern Jersey Ontario Championship show taking place. Our first class in the ring is our junior camp class, sponsored by RBC Royal Bank. We have a representative here from RBC Brantford, Kyle Johnson, and he's uh, going on the ring if you need to speak with them. They have uh, many different options for financing for farmers and members management and succession planning as well, and you can visit their website at rbcroyalbank.com. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the Southwestern Ontario Jersey Championship Show live from Ancaster Fairgrounds in Ontario where the Ancaster Fair is underway. My name is uh, Russell Gammon and I'm going to let my cohort here introduce himself now. Well, good morning, Russell. Uh, my name is Murray Reisner and certainly a pleasure to share the uh, duties with you here today. Uh, we've had a chance to look around the uh, stables uh, before the show started and we're in for a real treat today, Russell. There's some uh, unbelievable individuals out there and we're really looking forward to what's going to happen here in the next few hours. Yeah, Murray, you're absolutely right, both through the heifers and then on into the cows and some amazing udders even uh, 45 minutes ago that we're, uh, we're getting geared up to show in this, uh, in this special championship show. First time back or first time at the Ancaster Fairgrounds and uh, a lot of excitement here. There's always excitement uh, in the Jersey breed in, these, in this day and age. What we've got for you in the ring right now are the junior calves, or as some might call them, the uh, spring calves. They're born after March 1st this year, and uh, there, there are 11 of them here. We've got two added entries in this class, and I think if our math is correct, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, about 11. Yep, everybody's here and accounted for. Uh, on the screen right now, the heifer that's walking by you, uh, oh, I guess we're going to focus in on that heifer up in the corner. We'll just make sure we're telling you the truth. But we uh, we have got Kevin McGriskin from Grand Valley judging. Uh, Kevin and his wife Becky and their three children have uh, Kentville Holsteins and Jerseys. Kevin's a really experienced judge, loves judging, they love showing cows, they love working with cows on a daily basis as well and now their children are just I think creeping into the 4-H age. Uh, the eldest one, and uh, so there's going to be some exciting times in, in that household as well. Calf that Kevin is looking at right now is a Paul Lohr calf, and I think that's downtown Nikita, um, uh, exhibited by Paul Lohr, and she'd be by the Rapid Bay Bowl downtown. And uh, so she's in your screen right now, and Murray. I think there's another added entry that we may be seeing in a second here. We'll see. Well, Paul's getting lots of good air time here with Nikita. And Paul's taking up all the camera time. And here, here we are with uh, another added entry, Emily Franklin, with her entry of Arncrest Andreas Glitter. So uh, we're happy to have her as an added entry into this uh, first class of the day. The one thing that I'm really uh, excited about, Russell, is our youth people are here today. Yes. Our 4-H yes. members are here. And, in this first class, we've actually got four 4-H members showing their uh, two 2022 projects. So uh, you and I are both great supporters of our youth and the future of our industry, and it's, it's just awesome to see these young people out here competing with the uh, with the seniors of the breed, if you want to call it that, and, uh, <laughs> the pros. and uh, getting it done today. Uh, of course, this is a lead up to uh, something bigger down the road. There's going to be a 4-H championship show here tomorrow. Yes. So, uh, yes. As well as there's also a 4-H championship show in Stratford tomorrow. So, ah, so uh, a double header. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be attending the one in Stratford. And uh, I will uh, come to the one in Ancaster, there I we think go. so. So uh, we'll, we'll have it covered on both fronts. But, exactly. Uh, and we've actually got some uh, pre-4-H members out here showing here as well, Murray, yep. which so, is kind of cool. So the, the future is going on now. Well, Coach McGriskin's made a pull there. Uh, calf number five, who is a Leechland calf. She is a Ferdinand daughter, Lightning Ridge Ferdinand, Colin and Karen Leach. Just a, a preliminary pull on that. And I think Denise Sales has maybe got a heifer here. Bright on Colton Dance is uh, in second in the preliminary pull. And we'll stress that. 
And then number nine. Number nine coming in is uh, Carly Brooks, 4-H Project, uh, Lothman Video Cure, uh, bred known by Marcus and Brenda Lothman. So. And she followed in line by another 4-H entry from Miranda Morrison, uh, the Charlene Certified via Rockella, uh, comes in in fourth. Well, that's uh, good decisive decisions on Kevin's part. And there's that uh, downtown Nikita from Paul Laura's, the fifth poll in this class. So we're uh, getting a, a preliminary lineup here as, as things get started. And uh, yeah, good good turnout of cattle today. I think somewhere in the range of 80 head, somewhere between 80 and 90. And uh, such a busy time of the year, Murray. Mm -hmm. When you were mentioning the 4-H shows that are on tomorrow, uh, soybeans, beans being done, corn being done in this part of Ontario. When a wheat gone in, uh, exactly. lot, lots of activity out there right now. Uh, uh, farming activity, and. Uh, and and a really good time in the dairy industry with the extra incentive days that are on now and cows are selling, milking females are selling at a really good clip, I think. Just a reminder to all our 4-H members showing your 4-H projects in the heifer classes. Please step forward in the final lineup so you can record your 4-H placing. It's my privilege to announce the junior calf jackpot sponsored by the Royal Bank of Canada. Will be presented to Charlene Jersey, specific in Kingdom, and her voice project, Charlene Joe Earmuffs, and here the winner of $100. Thank you. So that uh, Jennifer was just announcing in a lot of sponsorship here today from Royal Bank of Canada. John Deere and uh, Royal Bank of Canada would be, there's many great sponsors and they're two of the standards that are here. We've got our Royal Bank of Canada rep that's here as well uh, to add to the day. But uh, yeah, tremendous and I believe John Deere is actually sponsoring this live stream, Murray, as well. So we're uh, thankful for the opportunity to talk and uh, share with you what's going on here. We've got a great shot there right now, Russell, uh, John and Sandy's daughter right there, yeah. uh, number two in your program. Uh, she's the youngest in the class, but she, she's handling that calf extremely well. It's, uh, well. it's in her genes, isn't it? Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Uh, so we've got that number five calf has survived the first pull and is now still, uh, still leading the class. Uh, that's the uh, Leechland calf from the leeches at Lindsay, Ontario, and I guess just uh, either finishing up or in the uh, final stages of a great Lindsay exhibition down in uh, that town in central Ontario. Just a reminder to those with calves in the intermediate calf class, please bring your intermediate calves to ringside right behind the green curtains and Marshall for the next class. Thank you. So that's what we, uh, and it's a Colton calf from Brydon in second at the moment. <clears throat> Again, Kevin is uh, giving them a real good look over. A little bump. Number, yes, number one, oh, no, number nine. Uh, she's that video calf from uh, the Lothmans and 4-H uh, calf for Carly Brooks is third, and then Paul Orr, downtown Nikita, is in fourth. So a variety of sires here as well in, sure. that, uh, in that top group. Well, so we do want to make mention of our uh, perennial Wind master out there, yes. Doug Green. Uh, Doug is a familiar face at many, many shows. Certainly volunteers his time to uh, help the judge present the cattle to their best ability. Uh, and uh, Doug takes his responsibilities very seriously uh, at every show he does. And uh, we're very pleased that he is uh, taking his time away from Air Farmers Mutual. Mm -hmm. to, uh, we have the cattle on the features on the other side of the range. In first place, congratulations to Colin and Karen Leach with Leachland Mini AK. And in second place, Brad on Farms with Brad on Colton Dance. Congratulations.
Yeah, you were mentioning Doug and his finesse as a ringman. Well, uh, some of that finesse was learned at the knee of somebody who's sitting right beside me, I think, uh, known as the dean of, of uh, ringmen here in Canada, without any question, you, Murray. And uh, if there was any question about who was sitting beside me, Thank you, I think uh, Kevin's going to have okay. some reasons for us now. We're ready to hear from Kevin. So. Well, this is an uh, honor to judge uh, the Jersey show here, the championship show here. And I think uh, what a way to start out a class. Like when you look out of this uh, Jersey here down the end, she's a really well-balanced and uh, well-grown heifer here. But I think these top five here come out quite handily here. We got a heifer that's winning the class that has a overall balance, walking on a set of feet and beautiful set of feet and legs, the nice square rump structure I like to see. But for me today, to go over the one in second, she's just a little tighter up through her crops, having a little more heart to her than this beautiful angler heifer we have in second. The heifer in second over the heifer in third is that beautiful breed character you love through her head and neck. I prefer the way she, her tail head sits down in her rump structure over this real powerful heifer we have in third. Third over fourth is that strength and power, that depth of rib, having a little more maturity through that heart region over the heifer in fourth. Fourth over the one in fifth, just on that thorough placing, just having her thoroughs underneath her, uh, uh, ahead of her rump structure, just keeping those legs underneath her a little bit better than this well-balanced heifer we have in fifth. Congratulations. So there's, well. We will have uh, full placings on this class in a minute. We want to uh, say that we're off to, a, we're off to a really good start. One of the things I enjoy, Murray, is hearing a judge who's, when, you, uh, when he makes comments about the animals, you can see it. Even the unschooled, like myself, can see it, Murray. And that's certainly what Kevin does. He de describes the animals really well. And I guess we're having a battery change in our microphone here, so we'll... Uh, Episodes full placings on that class for you from Jennifer Peart Anderson, one of the key organizers of this event, in a moment. Well, you talk about Mike, uh, he's a product of the Canadian Judges Program. Uh, yes. you know, very well schooled. And, and we had our first and second place animals from the junior path class returning to the picture area. First and second to the picture area. Thank you. I had the good fortune of knowing uh, Kevin's father, Mike. Uh, yes. Back in the day when uh, they were at Port Perry, just around the corner from uh, Hanover Hill. So I uh, got to know Mike really well in, in back in those days. So, uh, Well, that's a very extensive family, is it not, McGriskins? There's a lot of, uh, lot of people who've been involved in the dairy industry in that family, yep. and I think kind of married into it. Like, there's yep. a lot of connections. Yep. <clears throat> so here we go with our uh, intermediate calves that are in the ring right now. And I think we've got 10 of them that we're anticipating. <clears throat> we're going to see. So uh, when we get the uh, right timing, we'll tell you some stories about these calves. And it will all be factual. Of course. We're going to see some... Ah, there we are. Well, we've got an intermediate calf in front of us, Murray. That's number 11. Eva Sales, it's her 4-H calf, and it's bright on Colton Time. Out of a tequila dam, I believe. And maybe you want to tell us about the next one. Number 12. Number 12 coming into the ring is a joint entry of Long Ella and Charlene uh, Jerseys. Uh, Vita Joe Visa, um, a Joel daughter. Yes, um, we're going to see a lot of those. I today. would expect that we would see quite a few of those and this morning. She's out of a uh, uh, the 96 point Oakfield T Bone Vivienne. Now, right now, we've got Emmy Lang is leading in yeah. number 13. That's Besley Kingsdale Scout Tiptoe. Exhibited by Matt Lang and Quality Holsteins, Quality Holsteins and Jerseys, and uh, she's a scout daughter, Elliot's HG for Hard Gun Scouts. Entering the ring now is our intermediate cows, Black December 1st, 2021 to February 28, 2022. We're pleased to have our intermediate calf jackpot in this class, sponsored by Wiener Craft International. 
Just a reminder to all 4-H members showing their Gorge projects to take a step forward in the final lineup so we can record your 4-H placings. Huge thank you again to Ancaster for hosting Ancaster Fair for hosting the Southwestern Ontario Jersey Show for the first time. Everyone's excited to be here in these amazing facilities and we look forward to a great show. If you'd like to tune in to the live stream, we have Russell Gannon and Marie Reisner doing an expert job on commentating and we thank John Deere Canada for their sponsorship of this event. Murray, who have we got there? We have got uh, Clarissa McCollum is on the halter. That's and the she's Willow Creek. 16. Yep, yeah, Willow, Willow Creek, Creek. Junk Crew Jeezy uh, entry. <laughs> she's a Junk Crew daughter exhibited by the Osborne family. So. Yeah. And so there's that. Then we've got the, the legendary Paul Franken. Paul and Lorraine. Paul Lor, VIP Annabelle. Yes, showing for he and his life love uh, <laughs> Lorraine. Yep. She's a River Valley Venus VIP daughter, as her name would indicate. And, then, and moving into our screen right now is the Bride on Entry, a 4-H uh, project of Denise Sayers, Bride on Fizz Noel. She's a Tequila Fizz daughter and um, born December the 1st. Yeah. And I think the conference had some success this year, so we'll see if it continues on. Um, and then seconds, we will have Mr. Brent Howe, who judged the National Guernsey Show yesterday, uh, last evening, as a matter of fact, so a busy man and a productive man. Uh, he's showing a Willow Creek RVV Rush, and that's from Howe's Holstein's John Weaver in Clark okay. Valley, a go partnership the, that way. Yeah, you're, you're and she's a River Valley Victoria's team. daughter, as that RVV um, would indicate, eight, out of a tequila dam, of course, bred by the Osbournes the and now owned by that uh, partnership. And Weavercroft International are the uh, sponsors of the jackpot prize, $100, I believe, in this, uh, in this class. So there's been great... Uh, sponsorship across the board on, on these jackpot prizes too so they'll at some point Jennifer will have an announcement for us on what's who the, uh, the fortunate winner of that award is uh, and the interesting thing Russell uh, on the Willow Creek entry uh, those are all hosting names that are on the bottom of yes. that so uh, <laughs> good cow men no good cows regardless of the color of their hide so uh, well, this is a pretty nice heifer that's just gone by that Brenda is yeah we've, we've uh, got a uh, sense that John Weaver has become quite a quite passionate through his relationship with Laurent Lambert yep. in Quebec uh, in uh, involved in the breed and joining a couple of his friends Clark Valley and Brent are part of the team as well Got, uh, yeah, so there's 10 of these uh, intermediate calves or winter calves, depending on how you want to say it, what language you speak. That's right. Somehow we missed Jenna Elliott, number 10. Uh, Jenna with Mixing Moves Gentry Ruda, number 10 in your program. Uh, a Gentry daughter again from a Charlene Showdown entry. So, uh, and there's Mr. Paul Franken monopolizing the camera again for some <laughs> reason. So, uh, well... But, uh, he deserves every bit of attention yep. he gets. And, uh, we've also got a call-in entry in here that hasn't come in front of the camera to talk about. And another, she's a viral daughter, Bushley P. and Viral, and she's number 15 if you see her on the catalog, on the uh, screen, sorry. So I'm thinking there's quite a variety of sires here in this class as well. Yes, there's Gentry's, but there's Colton's, Joel's, Scout's, Viral, Venus VIP, Fizz, and Victorious. So, a lot of uh, it's it's uh, certainly been an interesting time in the Jersey breed. So many uh, bulls available, AI units uh, because of growth of the breed, both in Canada and the United States and other countries have ramped up their inventory of bulls, and uh, so lots lots of good choices for genetic selections for uh, Jersey owners. We just love the way that Kevin McGriskin gives these animals a good look over, look, look over but then uh, is very decisive when his head is. Look at them, too. And, yeah, Murray, you certainly can see the uh, the benefits of the 4-H program coming out here with the, uh, the ability of these leaders who are pretty tender in their years. <laughs> 
and uh, just controlling the animals well, presenting them so well, and uh, getting those there. It's exciting. Well, Russell, there's a, a pent-up interest out in the, uh, the countryside amongst the 4-H to get back to doing what we love. Showing calves, having a great competition, you know, uh, friendly rivalry, I guess, yes. if you want to call it that. But uh, we've been away uh, for three years, basically. Uh, 2019 was our last uh, TD Classic at the Royal, and I'm sure that uh, subject will come up uh, through the course of the day. But uh, we're really, uh, really looking forward to what's going to happen in just five weeks as we move oh into the 100th Royal Agricultural <laughs> Winter Fair. So, uh, Everything seems to be going so fast, right? <laughs> Croft International, come to the pitcher area, please, to present the $100 jackpot. The winner in this class will be entry 13 from Best League, from Atlantic Quality Hosties with Best League, Kate Sale, Scout, Tip Toe. And uh, so they're in the, in the first draw here, that... Uh, 13, the Besley Kingsdale Scout Tiptoe is uh, the first, is pulled first in the first pull, I think is the way to say it. And uh, the VIP daughter from Paul Orr is pulled in second. And then the Fizz daughter from Bride on Farms is third. And again, just a preliminary pull, Murray, but uh, probably some indication of what Kevin is, uh, has got on his mind. And, uh, and I think, is that maybe Jenna Elliott there with uh, another young person there with uh, that number uh, fourth Jack, pulled Jack, animal. Is in four. Yep. And Clarissa, I think, with the animal. With the Osborne animal. Yep. yep. Uh, pulled first. Russell, was she part of the Besley uh, Dare yes. to uh, Yes, I heard a dream so. Yes, Entry number Number six was second. Entry number seven was seventh. Entry number eight was eleven. Entry number nine was third. And in two added entries, entry 108, Paul Lore Downtown Hakita was fourth. And another added entry 109 was eighth. Arlen Crest, Andreas Glitter. For those of you in the barns, Please be advised we have our first lineup of intermediate calves, so please bring your senior calves to ringside to marshal behind the curtain. Thank you. Well, Murray, I uh, had a message this morning from Brianne Brown that she wanted to know about the results of the December calf class, so I guess <laughs> she does follow her buyers uh, very well. And uh, at the moment, there's probably quite a bit of excitement in Yarker, Ontario, I'm thinking that the keenness of the Brown family. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, the uh, number 13 heifer, that uh, scout daughter, uh, is still leading the pack at the moment. I'm going to get a second or third look from, uh, from Judge McGriskin. And we've got the VIP daughter from Paul Orr, Annabelle, VIP out of a tequila in second, and then the fizz daughter from Brydon at the moment in third. She's out of a viral dam as well, so some influence from that bull in this class. I've got a nice little crowd looking, watching the show so far, and I'm sure it will grow as the day goes on, both in the bleachers and in the standing area off to our left. <coughs> we want to thank Bruce Sargent from Farm Boy Productions for being the person that's putting this uh, live stream together today. Bruce has been on the job for a couple of hours already, getting everything set up on the boards and the screens and uh, doing his usual spectacular job. So we're, I guess, getting real close to the final lineup here. Looks like there's been no changes as we move into the final lineup. Um, We'll just wait for the signal from uh, Kevin that he's uh, satisfied, and apparently it looks like so he, he is. is so he's having a chat with the exhibitors, <laughs> so, right, so Jennifer will soon be telling us uh, about those official results. 
But uh, very nice win for Matt Lang and Quality yeah. Holstein. Uh, Matt was a former member of one of our judging uh, yes. teams that went to World Berry Expo for representing Ontario. Came back after he finished 4 H and won the, uh, his division in uh, post secondary. Congratulations to the winner of the Cat Class in first place, in number 13, from Matt Lang and Paul Wilson, with Bethany Scale Scale Details here in a minute, but we've got our uh, lineup in those intermediate calves. Russell, we're getting a great view of this uh, winning heifer here right now. Mm -hmm. When she's coming right at you, boy, that is an <laughs> impressive view. The width of chest and that openness are good. The rib and the, the width through the yeah, barrel. It's so just much a, weak character about her head and neck. I mean, just a beautiful heifer. Entry number 10 was fourth with Entry number 11 was 6th. Entry number 12 was 10th. Entry number 13 was 1st. Uh, Besley Kingsdale Scout Tiptoe. Entry number 14 was 9th. Entry number 15 was 8th. Entry number 16 was 5th and 2nd 4-H for Clarissa McCallum. Entry number 17 was 2nd. Entry number 18 was third, and first 4-H for Denise Sales, and entry number 19 was seventh. In the ring now, we have our senior calf class, and we'd like to thank our jackpot sponsor in this class, Trow Nutrition Sure Game. Russell. <laughs> We were, uh, Murray and I are just enjoying the arrival of a, a young man named Nolan Allardyce who is uh, handling the camera on behalf of a very close friend of his, Clarissa McCollum. And uh, Clarissa's been exhibiting in that last class, so Nolan was taking over the duties and uh, making sure that there were some great shots, which I believe are going up on the Jersey Ontario website as well. So we can uh, we won't make any comparisons <laughs> afterwards between Clarissa's work or try to guess who took which. You know, <laughs> yeah, he has done the first couple of classes that way. And now we're looking for some senior calves, and I think we've got three, six, seven, eight, nine of those. There were ten entered, and we have nine of them that are going to uh, make their way into the ring in the senior calf or fall calf, as the case may be. 
We'd like to thank our sponsors for this event. All the exhibitors had a delicious breakfast this morning, sponsored by EWP and C. Our voyage classes later this morning are sponsored by John Deere. And our jackpot sponsors are very much appreciated as well, along with Impact Fair. And John Deere is doing a live stream for those folks uh, watching from home. And in this class, in the class we have a learning as senior guys, we're going to judge Kevin McCrisco. Number 20, who is on your screen right now, is Charlene VIP Snapchat. Uh, McKenna Morrison is the 4-H member showing that heifer, Murray, and she is again a River Valley VIP, Venus VIP daughter. She's following the line by the entry of Michaela Hill, her 4-H project, uh, Elmhurst QCJ, my mama said. <laughs> my mama said. Mama said. Mama said. Who's she by, Murray? She's by Rapid, a River Valley Joyride. And Russell, I'm sure you would know all about the River Valley uh, breeding program and, and Joyride. So. Then we've got, uh, I think, Jenna Elliott's back in the ring with another animal, Mixing Moose Getaway Emmy. Is that number 22 two who's on the screen? Rapid Bay Getaway being her sire. And next in line would be the Willow Creek. Uh, entry from the Arkham family, Willow Creek Gentry Arrow, uh, Rapid Bay Gentry Daughter. And then we have someone who has been a very passionate Jersey showman for a good long time, Carol Mello Ruta, exhibiting Glenholm J. Jin Ricky, who is a Joel daughter. <laughs> I guess that's where the J comes in. And uh, She's uh, from that Master Breeder Glen Home program as well, long established about almost 90 years now that the Mellows have been in. And her dam is named Gin and Tonic, so I guess we're seeing the pattern. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yep. Hope we get a Gin and Tonic <laughs> later, Murray. <laughs> Number 25 on your screen is uh, another Willow Creek entry, uh, Clarissa McCallum on the holly, Willow Creek Joel V, again, a Joel daughter. Oh, we're seeing a collection of Joel daughters and with... Uh, Joyride, uh, the influence of Paramount, Paramount Joy coming through as well. 26 on your catalog is Brydon V. Clara. She's a River Valley Victoria's daughter. We're saying River Valley in Guimo pretty often today. And uh, she's quite a, a good sized, well grown heifer there as well. 27 is out and. Alicia Wang is coming in with her 4-H entry, another Joel out of Willow Creek Joel Valley. So, uh, Willow Creek very well represented in this class with three entries here. So. Joel well represented with about three daughters and uh, Venus VIP. And now we've got a number 29 is just coming onto your screen now. That's Rogia, Rogia Andreas Jaina. She is exhibited by a partnership of Heavenly Genetics, John Weaver, and Laurent Lambert. Uh, and she's a Sunset Canyon Andreas daughter, bred in Stansted, Quebec, by Rochelle Gay and her family uh, down there. And they're passionate Holstein and Jersey breeders. And uh, this calf bought, I think, at the Quebec Spring Show mm -hmm. this year. And uh, quite a wonderful calf to round out the class as well. So I think we have nine, Murray. Does yep. that sound about yep. right? And yep. for those of you not familiar with Heavenly Genetics, that's yep. perhaps a new name that you haven't heard for a while, but uh, for several of us, it's a familiar name. Uh, Miss Cliff Whale uh, is Heavenly Genetics, so uh, a partner with John Weaver and Lauren Lambert. And, uh, Claire's an appreciated uh, import to Canada now. <laughs> I guess she's she's been resident here for a few months. Yep. And with her talent and drive and vision and abilities, uh, she's doing some work with Select Sires Canada. Yep. And, uh, and a very popular judge. I believe she'll be judging on Saturday or tomorrow uh, in Stratford, uh, I believe. Yes, so, at the 4-H uh, show. At yeah. the 4-H show in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some 4-H achievement days in the morning. And then uh, then there will be the uh, Western Ontario 4-H championship show will be on tomorrow in Stratford. And... Claire is also judging senior showmanship at Worldberry Expo. Oh, very good. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. The first Sunday of uh, the Expo event, uh, 
probably will be doing that. Unfortunately, COVID kept her away from uh, World Air Expo Excellent. last year. And while we're talking about World Air Expo uh, showmanship, another familiar face to you and I, Mr. Jason French, will also be doing oh, really? uh, showmanship. He'll be doing the junior division oh, cool. uh, of the youth activities at World Air Expo. So congratulations to uh, two Canadians, as we want to call them. Uh, Jason and uh, Claire will be uh, officiating at uh, the youth activities. That's a huge competition. Yeah. Uh, I've had the opportunity of working on that committee for many, many years and uh, was given the privilege of judging senior showmanship many years ago uh, myself. So uh, it's always a great time and uh, they're looking at upwards to 400 uh, youth take out. Uh, Taking that uh, activity on Sunday mm -hmm. afternoon this year. Can uh, we have a representative from Shirking come to the Shirking Drive Nutrition, come to the Cafeteria, present the jackpot, and the jackpot in this class to Glen Hall J. Jim Ricky. Oh. So we can watch it. So there's another uh, great sponsor of this event in Trial Nutrition slash Sure Game. Uh, very, very supportive of, of activities in the dairy industry, obviously. And uh, yeah, so they sponsored the jackpot as Jennifer just announced there in this class. So some deep thought going on with Judge McGriskin as he's. Uh, I see his father in law, Barry Quick Falls, up in the stands Sorry. watching. and thinking to himself, I'm sure, you know. I'm, I'm pretty sure nodding his head in agreement with uh, Kevin's decisions, too. <clears throat> so, yeah, we're seeing the crowd growing almost class by class here, which is, which is a good thing. It's a good time for the Jersey Breed Murray. Uh, Jersey Canada just reported they'd had their highest month since the early 1960s for registrations and so they're on their way to highest year since 62 or 63. Uh, there were some big changes in the Jersey breed when uh, the, the milk board came in and certainly the milk board and uh, dairy farmers of Ontario have been a great thing for the dairy industry but it did cause some changes in the Jersey breed with the all Jersey markets disappearing and uh, there was a a tougher time for the breed and uh, there's been a bounce back in the last 20 to 30 years and uh, yeah they've been regularly recording highest registration since the early to mid 1960s in the last while and jerseys popping up everywhere when you go out to farms and all of a sudden one comes poking its nosy <laughs> little head around the corner. <clears throat> Yeah, it's interesting in the revival, and, and the other thing that's interesting is the iron farm processing that's going yes. on, you know, and uh, we're seeing a, uh, a real interest from uh, our consuming public of going directly to the farm and uh, thinking of the sergeants and, and what's going on with their operation down uh, east of uh, Oshawa. And, I, I see in the crowds Jenny Butcher's over there from Little Brown Cows, mm -hmm. not so far from here. And she's uh, she and Wes are <laughs> interesting lady to chat with. Oh, huh? she's brain candy for me. <laughs> I just can't stop asking her questions. Well, we got a first poll here, and number twenty-nine, that uh, Heavenly Genetics Weaver and Lam and Lambert, their calf, uh, the Andreas daughter from Rogua, has been pulled in first. And I know we've got Jenna Elliott's in third, and twenty-one would be the oh yeah. The Hills, with their calf purchased from the States, from Elmhurst and Quiet Cove. Uh, the Joybride daughter, who's out of a chrome, who is uh, out of the same family or descends from uh, Pinehaven SS Marmy, a grand champion at um, World Dairy Expo. And uh, so that's a, a Nova Scotia pedigree, if you go back far enough, to Pinehaven uh, there. So pretty competitive bunch, of, well, a very competitive bunch of heifers at the top end. This is again the first poll. 23 is another gentry daughter from uh, Richard and Teresa Osborne and family of uh, 
Hagersville. Thank you very much for sponsoring this class. Child nutrition training to please make your way to the picture area. And first call for our summer year lens to the Marshland area, please. We'd like to thank all of our exhibitors today. We know it takes a lot of time and dedication to pull, uh, pull this off. Thank you, Adrian Franken, George Mason, Alan Julie Pennington, Alice and Angela Dolson, Alicia Wang. Blue Creek Jerseys, Ryan Farms, Ryan Baldrick, Charlotte Farms and Jerseys, Colin and Karen H, Creek Edge Farms, Curtis Ruda, Ed Bonnie Franken, Emily Franken, Glen Hill Jerseys, Heavenly Genetics, John Weaver and Laurent Lambert, Household Students, John Weaver and Clark Valley, Jeff Chelsea and McKenna Stevens, Jenna Elliott, Joel Bay, Keegan Hill, Kenzie Gates, Lessa Diamond Sharp, Lauren Ella, Marcus and Brenda Lockton, Matt Lang and Quality Holsteins, Michaela Hill, Parallel Genetics, Jamie Van Holsteins, Allison Jansen, Paul and Mary Franken, Paul and Farms, Rapid Bay Jerseys, Richard and Teresa Osborne, Trevor Hill, Beltas Farms, Walker Bird Farms, Whiskey Hollow Syndicate. So thank you again to all our visitors today. Well, Marie, I guess we've got a very close to final placing on this class with the uh, Rogula animal still leading the way and the Elmhurst. Uh, and that'll be bred by Michael Hurst and his family and Quiet Cole Hosties, the Elsass family down in Wapakoneta, Ohio, I think is where they hang out. She was sold to the hills and I think maybe they're triple. Just a reminder to all of our 4-H members exhibiting their 4-H projects to take a step over their lives and begin record the four H places. Thank you. So yeah, it'll be the Triple T and Heath sale, I think is where that heifer was uh, was purchased by the Hill family from Eaton, Ontario. They've been keen. You'd remember Katie uh, Hill being a quite an enthusiastic and successful showman uh, over the years. And now another generation, her nieces and nephews, wow. Trevor's, Trevor and Tammy's daughters and son are keen as, as their aunt was. Wonderful family. <clears throat> they just had a, a cow that they bred who won her class at World Dairy Expo last year, score excellent 91, max score at River Valley Farms. Uh, River Valley Victorious Maya, who is going to be in Madison shortly. Sometime next week she'll arrive there, and uh, River Valley will be working to see if they can uh, win a class two years in a row. Kevin's just doing some consultation with each one of the exhibitors about the heifer and what he's seeing in, her, in each one of them. And then he'll come over and let us know what he's seeing in each one of them. So within seconds, some reasons. Not Uh, great class, we're all the way down the line here. I think uh, these two members come to the top pretty gay here. Got a half hand pop, it's got a lot of balance. But a little more strength in the one in second. But I prefer the one in second, the way her third placing is. The way she tracks it and goes where that I feel for me. I, I'm always a power and strength guy. I just like the white and the one out in second. Just between her. Uh, Fun like that, just track a little straighter to get her ahead for one first. So I know with her, I'm not spraying her good, especially up high. And you're going to be hungry, a little more heifer, a little more heifer uh, from uh, the side profile that follows you in this younger heifer class in third. Third over fourth, just the way she handles those rear legs, just having a nice receptor, the way she plants on the ground, then the big. Uh, we have out fourth. Fourth over fifth, 
is on that uh, way she just went over an uh, angle up through her front end, a little cleaner through her head and neck than another well bounce ever we had in the fifth. Congratulations. Dan and Russell are a very descriptive set of reasons yeah. from our judge. Uh, follow along and see exactly what he's seeing and he's relating it to us in, uh, in really good form. A pair of really good yeah, efforts yeah, so at the top a, of this class. They were ex exceptional okay. winners, uh, those yeah. two in this class. They quality yeah. oozing out of them, as some might say. Our in first place, the entry from Academy Genetics, John Weaver and Lorette Nader, um, Ruga Andreas Gina. In second place, entry number 21, Elmer's Q, J. My Mama Said, uh, exhibited by Michaela Hill. And reading your program down, entry number 20 was eighth, entry number 21 was second and first voyage, entry number 22 was third. Entry number 23 was 4th, entry number 24 was 5th, entry number 25 was 6th, entry number 26 was 9th, entry number 28 was 7th and 2nd 4-H for Alicia Wank, and number 29 was 1st, Ruga Andreas Jaina. Now in the ring are our summer yearlings. And in the summer yearling class, our jackpot of $100 is once again graciously sponsored by RBC Royal Bank of Canada. And we have Kyle Johnson on hand to present this award. <laughs> Show and showmanship. The showmanship uh, classes will start immediately after um, You're okay. after we do junior hair, champion for age camp, and then showmanship. So if you're interested in showmanship and are not entered, please come to the desk. Thank you. Okay, number 31 is coming onto your screen. That's Carol Ruda, or Mello Ruda again with Glenholm Gentry Audacious. Love that name, Audacious. It rhymes with a good wine called Bode. <laughs> there you go. 32. Mr. Is Franken coming into you again, Paul and the Range Entry, Paul or Premier Mocha. So all the way from Clinton, Ontario, to be part of our show this morning. She's a uh, premier daughter. And followed uh, closely by his niece, Emily, who we were a little shocked to hear how what uh, age Emily had arrived at this morning, Murray. We thought she was still a 4 -H -er. A little bit beyond that now. A uh, very talented young woman. She is showing her own heifer, or heifer she owns, Paul Lord Joyride Light Show by River Valley Joyride. Coming into your screen right now is the Charlene entry with Sandy Kingan on the holder. Uh, Charlene VIP Bitcoin from uh, the River Valley VIP Bowl. Charlene all the way from Forest, Ontario. And then we've got 35 Edgley, one of two Edgley entries in this class. <coughs> this is Edgley Victorious As Premium. As we all know, these events are not possible without the gracious support of our sponsors. Our jackpot sponsors today are Normal Dairy Systems, World Bank of Canada, Child Nutrition Shirking, and Weaver Crop International. Our general show sponsors are Air Farmers Mutual Insurance, Farm Credit Canada, Jersey Ontario, Select Cyrus Canada, and EastGen. Our class and championship sponsors are Dorothy.
Portman Brothers, Tavistock Veterinarians, Jerome and Jerseys, Albert and Veterinary Services, Walt Haven Farms, and our exhibitor breakfast was sponsored by BW Feeds. Thank you once again, and also thank you to John Deere for sponsoring our live stream. Business. I think we have number 40 coming in here now. This is ah, this is fascinating. This is a daughter of Valley Stream J.I.S. Juno. Blast from the past there. Al Cunnington is exhibiting this heifer who is owned by Creek Edge Farms in Alora, Ontario. And she's right on. So that's what a Juno daughter looks like in 2022, <laughs> Murray. Born in the early 1980s, that bull, about 39 years ago. Just kind of cool. Wow. She's been shown by a 4-H member named, uh, I think, Emily Lennox this year, who was the Fergus Fall Fair ambassador, by the way, as well. Yeah. So that's, and I think we're back. So uh, we haven't talked about this heifer yet. Number yet. 30 is the Glen Home Jerseys, uh, the first of two uh, entries from Glen Home, uh, Glen Home Traditional Confidence. They uh, buy one of their own bulls. Oh, yeah, yes. homebred bull. A homebred bull um, from Glen Home Farms. And Carol is following right along in line with the other Glen Home entry, Glen Home Gentry Audacious. And we've talked about Gentry so much already yes, this morning. Yes, he's had a lot of daughters in this, uh, in this great heifer show. So we're, uh, once again, Kevin has given them all a really good look over. One thing I've noticed, Richard, is it must be a cooler fall morning. These heifers are all hard top this morning. I think we're feeling the, the, the dramatic change in the temperature. So, uh, uh, Plus three was an eye opener this morning. So yeah, we've got, uh, once again, these heifer classes have been strong and good. A little bit of a preview of the Royal Agricultural Winter Fair, I would dare say. And uh, some of the, many of these heifers will make their way to Toronto in mid, early to mid-November for some competition in, in, at the 4-H level and also uh, in the open show as well. Saturday the 12th of November is the place to be at the... the uh Royal or Cenex Ring of Excellence uh, the Jersey Show will be taking place that morning and uh, into the afternoon, and of course uh, later on in the afternoon, around four o'clock, will yeah. be the Supreme Champion selection, both for the Junior Supreme and the uh, Milking Age uh, Supreme Champions. So uh, we're looking forward to the Holstein Show on uh, Friday, the 11th. A uh, bit of a change this year in the Holstein Show. Uh, all the non-milking classes will take place on Thursday afternoon into the evening, following the red and white uh, Holstein show in the morning. Uh, there's lots of coffee, donuts, and breakfast sandwiches left uh, over yeah. by the beaches on the table there. <laughs> These refreshments were sponsored by BW Feeds, and we might as well eat them up, so have a hunger for a snack. Once again, our summer year class is in the ring today, and our Good size class. <laughs> Prize is sponsored by Royal Bank of Canada, and in this class, the winner of the jackpot prize is Little Creek Jerseys with Little Creek Joy Ride Chris.
has been pulled first. She is out of a, ooh, could be a black apple. Dam, black Mariah is uh, Dam. Oh, big strong heifer there. And is that Teresa Osborne with uh, one of the, yeah, a joyride daughter, Willow Creek Joyride Crisp. Thirty-nine would be a Paulin, another Paulin heifer. Kenzie Goats is a four, four Goetz is a 4-H member showing that heifer. She's a viral daughter, Bush P and viral, out of a VIP. She's being followed in line by the Charlin entry, a Charlin VIP Bitcoin, and right behind her is Carol Ruda. And Carol's yes, got a yes. audacious, does she not? Yeah, that Loving that name on that yep. the Gentry daughter. And the second Glen Home entry, number 30, follows right in line, uh, the traditional confidence daughter. And then a veteran of the industry. <laughs> Joel Bag. Joel Bag. It's uh, great. Joey to see. has such a passion for history. He's got a deep seated passion. He's about a fourth uh, generation Jersey breeder. And. Uh, and uh, has certainly continued the Edgeley prefix. The dispersal sale of that herd was in 1971, 51 years ago, wow. and Joey is still keen as all get out about uh, Jersey cattle and maintains a bunch of heifers at his property in uh, Little Britain down near um, Lindsay, Ontario. And uh, of course, they used to be uh, up in the uh, Thorn Hill area in uh, Metro Toronto no. almost now, certainly, or just outside Metro Toronto. So a great, great line of passionate Jersey folks, and Joey is certainly continuing that tradition. So on your screen, you're getting a, a good front view of uh, our summer yearlings. Uh, Judge McGriskin giving them a, an appraisal from the front side. And ah, she's staying in there. That, uh, that's that premier daughter we mentioned to you from Paul oh, Lynn, Paul Lohr. Little, Paul and Lorraine Franken. A little bit of a shake here. We're going... Uh, uh, yes, a little movement. 39 is... Oh, another Paul and Heifer with a 4-H member exhibiting. Kenzie there. She's all good. And she is a viral daughter who is a son of Premier as well. So, kind of cool. And then Teresa with that Joyride Heifer, who's a twin. Hope she's got a sister that's every bit as good. And she's out of a premier dam, so there's kind of a premier theme here. Uh -huh. And uh, Kevin made some good comments about liking power and strength, and that is one of the things that the premier bull certainly brings to the table. So uh, consistent with some of Kevin's comments and beliefs as well. Which heifer's fourth? I wonder if there's a premier connection. That's the Shaolin Bitcoin heifer. Um, I'm working a little harder to find nope. the premier connection there. Oh, no, nope. I think we're... Shaolin is in fourth place fourth. at this yep. point. Moving into line fairly quickly here. Kevin is uh, Stepping it right de along. decisive about his decisions. and moving them right along. Please step forward in line so you can record the 4-H placings. And I must say, Jennifer Peart Anderson is doing a wonderful job as the announcer here on the uh, on the microphone this morning. Jennifer's uh, was an enthusiastic 4-H member. She's been working, I think, with the Royal uh, Royal Bank or Farm Credit, one or the other, a bank, a financial institution anyway, and uh, farms with her husband Charlie and their daughter down in the kind of Hagersville area, I guess, not far from where Jennifer was raised at Peart Home Holsteins. Her dad, Doug, is on the board of Holstein Canada. Sister Heather's very involved in the farm and mother Mary Ann as well. And uh, so Jennifer and Charlie are establishing their own uh, maple leaf jerseys and I'm trying to remember the Holstein prefix. I should know that. I don't know for Charlie and Jennifer. We could ask.
review. Your review. And here's Kevin McGriskin and his reasons. Another great class all the way down the line here. These heifers can kind of give you a couple different looks here when you're out on the ring here. This heifer here, she, she doesn't show you ultra dairy, but when you're up on her and you put your fingers between her ribs, like she's got that with the rib, you grab her tail. She's, a, she's got a silkier tail than she looks. She's just going over that heifer uh, in second. The way she handles her legs and just having a little cleaner head and neck than the powerful heifer we have out in second. Second over third, a little closer placing here. I switched him in line here. I just prefer the length, the length of uh, body confirmation, that length from hook to pin over a nice well-balanced heifer we have in third. Third over fourth is that balance, a little more drop to her fore rib, a little more depth through her rear rib, and a little more power through that muzzle and that through her front legs than the fourth place heifer. Fourth over fifth on just maturity over the younger heifer in the class, just having a more depth through, especially in that heart region, than this angler heifer we have out in fifth. Congratulations. The results of the summer yearling class are as follows. Your class winner, entry 32 from Paul and Lorraine Franken, Paul Lor Premier Mocha. In second place, entry 39 from Paul Lynn Farms, Paul Lynn Viral Reisha. The results in the catalog are as follows. Entry number 30 was 6th, entry number 31 was 5th, entry 32 was 1st in your class winner, entry number 33 was 10th, entry number 34 was 4th, entry 35 was 8th, entry 36 was 3rd, and the jackpot winner, entry 37 was 7th, entry 38 did not show, Entry 39 was second in first 4-H for Kenzie Gates. And entry number 40 was ninth. Now in the ring is the Junior Yearlings. The Junior Yearling Jackpot class is sponsored by Trow Nutrition Sure Game. Well, we've got our first heifer in the junior yearlings, or spring yearlings as it's called, and that is uh, Al Cunnington is at the halter of Locust Edge Golden B. A. Noodle, who is a Rapid Bay Black Apple daughter, and she is exhibited and bred by Les and Darlene Sharp from around Alton area in uh, near Orangeville. We have someone we were mentioning earlier. Yeah, right? next, next coming into the ring is the Heavenly Genetics John Weaver and Lauren Lambert entry, uh, escorted by Ms. Claire Swale, one of the owners. You got Andreas Embrace, a Sunset Canyon Andreas. And she's followed by Jeff Stevens, who is leading uh, an entry owned by he and his two daughters, Chesley, Chelsea and uh, McKenna Stevens. And uh, so she's a 4-H calf for McKenna Stevens as well. And she is an out of El Jordan daughter, but bought in the OIS spring sale, invitational sale this spring. On your screen right now is the Charlene entry, Sandy Kingdon on the Halder, Charlene VIP status, a daughter of River Valley Venus VIP. Just a heads up for your exhibitors, we are following the program. We currently have the, the program order. We are currently doing junior yearling, an intermediate yearling, and then we will, we will do junior champion after that, followed by junior herd. 
just had, uh, we've got uh, the Glenholm animal on the screen right now, uh, Glenholm River Ecstasy, heifer that had a pretty good day down at the Ontario Summer Show this year. Uh, about the best day a heifer could have, let's put it that way. With, uh, one more, Murray. And this to the old bag. And rapid bow, the entry, uh, Sheridan's Andreas Champagne. Mm, well. Spelled a little different, but Champagne is always good. Sun, Sunset Canyon, Andreas' daughter again, um, exhibited by the partnership of Rapid Bay and Joel Bag. Yep. And I think that completes our class. That is it. I think we've got six. If I, I'm, like I could count again just mm -hmm. to be sure, but pretty sure we got through the fingers of one hand and then a thumb. And uh, got to those six heifers that are in this junior yearling class. We're going to have a three intermediate yearlings, and then we'll have selection of a junior champion female. So that's the uh, and Trow Nutrition again. I guess sponsoring the jackpot in this class. I want to give a shout out to all these companies that are doing such a generous job of sponsorship, and supporting their customers and clients. fascinating to see how some of these heifers love the show ring while the folks at home aren't seeing her. We're looking at a heifer right now that is sure high-headed. Anyway, she's got, she is paying attention to everything that's happening in this, uh, in this building. Some of these heifers, Murray, I guess would be, uh, given their age, are with child by now. I would expect yeah, they, they, they should be at first, their uh, oldest heifer is uh, actually yeah, a, 18 months old. So, yeah. well, March 3rd. So, uh, <coughs> by now, Some pretty special heifers in this class too. Although we could have said that every uh, every single class that's been in to date. Kevin is moving along well because we started at 9:15 and it's 10:23 right now. So he is uh, being thorough and yet decisive. <clears throat> Looks like Emma Finch has uh, been pulled first. Number yes. 45, the Glen Home River Ecstasy entry from Glen Home Jerseys Incorporated. Emma Finch for each member on the halter. And a Reveresco daughter from Rapid Bay. Joey Begg is there in second with that Andreas daughter, Champagne. Uh, out of Edgley Tequila Sheraton, who I think has had some big winnings for owners down in the States as well after Joey sold her to, I think, uh, Vale and Bud John and Jordan, I think, at a certain point in time. <coughs> uh, I believe that's less than Darlene Sharp in third place. Alan Cunnington on the halter, Locust in Edge Golden. Class, the jackpot winner, sponsored by Trial Nutrition Sure is entry number 45, Glenholm River Ecstasy. And this will be your first call for intermediate yearlings to bring set to the Marshall area. And then we'll, once the intermediate yearlings are done, we'll go right into the junior champion. Efficiency at its best. This is a bunch of wide chests on these six heifers. They are not lacking in chest room by any means. You can run a pig or two through there. <laughs> we were just commenting that a pig could be run through the front legs of some of these, uh, well, all of these heifers that are out there this morning. And that's an old expression I learned in Idaho, one, or in Oregon once. Mm -hmm. Uh, was visiting uh, Bob Howard at Rebob uh, Jerseys in Oregon, and he told us about some cows we were going to see on a trip going over to Idaho, and he said, those legend daughters, you could run a pig through their front end. 
So we got to the farm, and I said to the farm owner, Kurt Alberti, have you got any pigs here? And he kind of looked at me and said, uh, no, why are you asking? And I said, well, we were told that you could run a pig through the front legs of a couple of your great legend daughters, and we just wanted to see if it was true. He continued to show us his cows after that kind of bizarre comment, so he's a very understanding man. It was a compliment. Well, yeah. Compliment taken. Russell, this is an outstanding, outstanding class. Outstanding class. I mean, yeah. You look at all these heifers, they're cut from the same mold, I mean, right from first to sixth. I mean, I'm glad, oh, Kevin's making a little bump, a, a final, uh, just before the final oh, line. Yes. But again, when you look at all of these heifers, they are cut from the same mold. There isn't a bad heifer out there at all. And, just because you're down the line a little bit in this class, you shouldn't feel bad. These are really, really good heifers. It's quite exceptional to see this kind of quality continue all the way through a class. We sometimes make those comments about, it. well, it'd be great to take the fifth or sixth or the bottom place animal home. But in this case, it would be real fun to have any of these heifers in your barn, or all of them. Get the wallet out, Murray. <laughs> So Kevin is just uh, describing to the exhibitors what he sees, and then he'll be telling us his reasons, and Jennifer will give us the placings in this class as well. I think Miranda Morrison is out there, and here's Kevin with his reasons. This is another great class all the way down the line. When you actually look at this heifer on the end here, I told the young leads person that... Uh, if she just had better feet and legs to her, she'd be ahead a little more. But it, it's a tremendous heifer on the end, too. So uh, let's uh, make sure we recognize how good these uh, breeders are all, all, all the way down the line here. But I think when you're talking about breeding, this is the one you kind of, when she walks in class there, she's got that balance, that style to her, walks out on a great set of feet and legs. She goes over that heifer in second, just that depth of rib all the way through, a little more heart to her little more spring all the way through when you get in behind her just having that power all the way through over the one in second second over third i'm going to repeat my reason a little bit but just having that depth of rib the one in third just a little more shallow but she is a very long heifer she uses that length and that wedginess through her chine over the one in fourth fourth over fifth is that depth of rib once again just having a little more heifer over the the younger heifer we have in the class She's having a little more heart to her, a uh, little wider through her rump than this another great heifer we have in fifth. Congratulations. Congratulations in our junior yearling class in first place, Glenholm River Ecstasy, shown by Emma Finch, our first place project, also best friend Brenda Mount and the Jump winner. Giving me a catalog down, entry 41 was 5th, entry 42 was 6th, entry 43 was 4th, entry 44 was 3rd, entry 45 was 1st, and entry 46 was 2nd. Now entering the ring is the Intermediate Yearlings, and the Intermediate Yearling class is sponsored by the River Park International, and they have to visit your area to present their sponsorship. Thank you. Well, Russell, our eyes haven't failed us yet, even in our advanced age. Uh, Kevin echoed exactly what you and I were chatting about in that last class. Tremendous efforts uh, all the way down the line. So, so. It was it was really cool to hear him uh, say that. This is our 4-H exhibitors. We will be the following 4-H members back to the ring. With the Boyish Projects, Carly Brooks, Sydney Kingdon, Denise Sales, Clarissa McCowan, Michaela Hill, Alicia Wank, Kenzie Bates, and Anna Fish. And the champion Boyish Cap will be after three years for So again, we're going to intermediate your length, then to your champion, then to your herd, and then champion Boyish Cap. Well, we're uh, 
at the moment, Murray, just waiting for three intermediate yearlings to make their way in. And here they are. We're going to see them shortly. Very shortly. Ah, I see Brian Sales has appeared. Off to your left. <laughs> Brian Soupy Sales has, has appeared. Russell, well, so only three entries. Uh, three good ones. Yep. yep. We've got, uh, well, right on our screen right now is the legend David Diamond is here with Painside DBR Petty. She's from Walker Bray Farms, and she is a daughter of Painside DBR, which stands for Douglas B. Robinson, son of Dougie and Jill Powerstroke. So that's who she is. And then our friend Emma Franken is going to appear in a second here, Murray, I think. Indeed. Here she comes. Uh, Ed and Bonnie Franken's entry from Fran Lee Jordan Violet. She's a Audubon Jordan daughter. Yes, a popular young sire at CMAX, and uh, she's out of a viral dam as well. And then we should have. There's Sandy Kingdon yes. on your screen yep. uh, from Charlene. Charlene riding shotgun. I love some of these names, names that are, are great. coming up. People do a super job. Joyride daughter as well. That's Sandy showing. So three heifers and maybe only three, but three very worthy heifers. Attention in the barns. Immediately following intermediate yearling, we'll do our junior champion parade. So please bring your first and second place animals back to the barn. Please We're going to have to give uh, Kevin McGriskin a little tip or something afterwards for making us look so good, Murray, because he's, he's echoing our comments while the class is going on uh, when he's there. So I think David Diamond and the Walker Bray entry have been given the, well, let's just make sure we know what we're talking about here. Yes. <laughs> Doug and uh, Doug and Kevin are going to go straight to a, I think, a final line. So the Painside heifer by Painside DBR Power Stroke will be uh, first, and Sandy Kingdon's going to be second with the Joyride daughter, and the Frankens, Ed and Bonnie, and their amazing family. And I'd just like to do a shout out to Ed and Bonnie. They have about six children, and the work ethic that those young people have is absolutely spectacular. So. Kevin's on his way to give us some reasons. There's only uh, three in this class here, but three pretty nice heifers here. But I'm starting out with one, actually. It looks like she's going to be uh, calving here within the next three weeks, or something like that. But for a heifer that's sprung up, uh, starting to spring up that much, walking with a hard, crisp pop, walking with a beautiful set of feet and legs, and that width of rump. But for her to go over the one in second is that depth of rib, that fore rib to her, that rear rib to her. When you get in behind, you're just a little more spring over the one in second. 
Second over third, a little closer placing here. I just prefer the leg, the, the cleanliness of bone to her, the cleaner of hawk to her over this uh, well-balanced heifer we have in third. No strong top. It's actually a really good heifer too. I'd just like to clean her up a little bit just to get her ahead of the other ones. Congratulations to the breeders. The results of the intermediate yearling class are as follows. In first place, the entry from Walker Bray Farms, Painside DBR Petty. In second place, entry number 48 from Charlin Jerseys, Charlin Riding Shotgun, which is also our best bred and known winner, and the jackpot winner from of the $100 sponsored by Weaver Croft International. And entry number 30 from Franken's Franley Jordan Violet was third. Our next class coming into the ring is our parade of heifer champions for junior champion. Which will be a fascinating class. <laughs> well, Russell, I think we're in for a real treat. Uh, uh, now that our junior champion parade is about to come into the ring, a total of 49 heifers have been paraded here this morning. Uh, very enjoyable heifer uh, show to watch and uh, uh, it's going to be probably the toughest decision of the day for our judge yes. to select his junior champion with mm -hmm. an honorable mention because all the class winners, in fact, every class has, has been uh, depth of quality right from top to bottom. And, and I think he's mentioned that in, Kevin has mentioned that in his reasons. So we're looking forward to our parade for junior champion. As they come into the ring, of course, we will be announcing them uh, in their own individual rights. And, uh, Jennifer is going to do that job for us. Jennifer Peart Anderson, and uh, she is picking up the microphone as we there speak. There we go. You and I will go on mute for a few yeah. moments, and uh, we'll be back uh, once the class has all been it's introduced. My pleasure this morning to introduce the junior champion parade candidates. In first place, entry number five, your winning junior calf, Leechland Mini Egg K, exhibited by Colin and Karen Leach. In second place. Ride on Colton Dance. The first place intermediate calf was, a, was the entry from Matt Lang and Quality Holsteins, Besley Kingsdale Scout Tiptoe. And the second place animal in, in, in that class was Paulor VIP Animal, Annabelle, exhibited by Paul and Lorraine Franken. Your winning senior calf was the entry from Heavenly Genetics, John Weaver and Laurent Lambert of Ruga Andreas Jaina. And the second place heifer in that class, a first 4-H project for Michaela Hill, showing Elmhurst, My Mama Said, a joyride. First place summer yearling, was Paulor Premier Mocha, exhibited by Paul and Lorraine Franken. And the second place summer yearling was also the first 4-H project for Kenzie Gates with Paulin Viral Reisha. The first place junior yearling entering the ring is uh, also a 4 first 4-H project for Emma Finch with Glenholm River Ecstasy, exhibited by Glenholm Jerseys. And the second place junior yearling was Sheraton's Andreas Champagne, exhibited by Rapid A Jerseys and Joey Bag. And the winning intermediate yearling, an entry from Walker Bray Farms, was Painside DBR Petty, with second place intermediate yearling going to Charlin Riding Shotgun for Charlin, Charlin Jerseys. These are the animals being presented for junior champion today and the junior champion and reserve champion award are graciously sponsored by Huronia jerseys with the junior champion calf winning $150 and the reserve junior champion calf winning $100 so thank you so much to Huronia jerseys Fred and Ruth Armstrong who were leaders and uh, organizers of the Southwestern Championship show in Stratford for many years and we do sincerely appreciate their support
49 in total. And six clouds is a two, 12. So. Just an interesting little factoid for you, Murray. We've got 12 heifers out here for junior champion, and I count six, seven, eight, nine, ten different sires. Just two bulls, uh, Joyride and Andreas, who have two daughters each out here. Uh, otherwise, ten. Uh, 10 different sires out of 12 heifers. So kind of interesting when you think about genetic diversity within a breed and, and different bloodlines and things that are uh, forces that are moving a breed as well. And uh, so, yeah, Kevin has done, he's given himself a hard task as we were saying in selecting the junior champion because he did such a good job in each class and found those consistent winners. He's a guy who believes in power and strength and wide front ends and barrels and spring of rib and good feet and legs. He's mentioned that as well in his reasons on occasion. So, uh, well, we had uh, 49 heifers uh, parade before us here in the junior classes and uh, he's got uh, 12 out here right now that when you watch them parade around Russell, they are cut from the same mold. Yes, the same cloth. I mean, his, his eye has been consistent all day long and he's he's had those kind of heifers that have come to the top for him and uh, but uh, the quality on, in the junior show has been phenomenal right from top to bottom as he mentioned in the in the one class you know the, the heifer that was uh, standing six. down the line at the uh, opposite end uh, changed her foot and leg structure just a little bit and she would be a, a long ways up so it's uh, a testament to the jerseys and the, as you say the genetics uh, programs that have been developed over the last you know 10 to 15 years has, has really driven the breed forward so uh. yeah they're uh, they're kind of you know building cows for the future you know they're just uh, such balanced heifers and they've got strength and yet they've got a dairy look to them their bone is flat and clean uh, interesting, one of the experiences we had in putting together the Holstein Canada with the Joint Classification Board, uh, and I don't think Tom Byers would mind me telling this story. We had him out at Spruce Avenue Farms, Dean and Dean Sales and Linda and that family, uh, and uh, we were looking at cows and we were talking about bone quality, and we said, well, Tom, tell us about the bone quality in this group of cows, and he started off with uh, the first cow and he said well she'd be a nine on our linear scale for bone quality and we all looked at him and said oh now Tom they're all going to be nine if she's a nine because she was probably a medium quality you know flat enough bone but not uh, extreme and uh, so we we did some work with him that day and uh, he of course carried that message to his other classifiers but uh, yeah yeah a lot of uh, there's just good flat bone on these uh, feet and legs and through the whole heifers and open ribs and it's just a beautiful beautiful display of heifers it's exciting yeah. so i guess kevin's now going to start to pick out a few of them for the final pull yeah. and, uh, <coughs> one, one of the uh, descriptive characteristics that i like is dairy strength yes uh, that, yes you know, we, we talked about style and angularity you know back in the days uh, in the 80s and 90s, but now we talk about dairy strength, and, and uh, with the word height or tallness or whatever is not part of our vocabulary anymore. It, it's the dairy strength, strength and balance, you know. And, and, and you know, it makes so much sense, Murray, when you think about the way cows are kept now in the uh, in the management systems, and we're looking for cows that can look out for themselves and be invisible cows, just be healthy and. Yep and do that all the time. So here's a few that have been uh, in the final pull here. We've got that uh, junior calf, and of course, no surprise any of them would be pulled out. She's the Ferdinand daughter, owned by the Leeches. And then we've got the December calf, who is the scout daughter, bred at Besley and Kingsdale, and owned by uh, Matt Lang and Quality Holsteins. And then we've got a senior calf, 
or fall calf. Uh, the Andrea's daughter, bred down in Quebec at Rogia, known by Heavenly Genetics, Don Weaver and Laurent Lambert. Then we've got the winning uh, March yearling as well from Glenholm, River Estacy, and uh, then the intermediate yearling. So those are five first prize winners that have been brought out uh, for the the final push here. As uh, junior shows are coming to a general wrap here, uh, let's give the junior exhibitors a round of applause in the next one. Uh, I pulled five out here for champion here. I think they kind of fit my pattern. That depth of rib, the balance. Walking on a nice set of feet and legs here. I got my March calf here when you stand from the side for her. Remember, she's got that depth of rib, that width of muzzle, that long from hook to pin here. We got her first prize December calf. She has that uh, beautiful rump structure walking out a great, great set of feet and legs here. Then we got the angularity of the September calf. The fall heifer that's really long, dairy. Then we have our first prize junior yearling that shows overall balance, strength, walking out a great set of feet and legs. Then we have our winning yearling here that's getting close to calving, but she shows that depth of rib, that width of rump, and that strength and power through her muzzle here. I'm going to go out and select my junior champion, reserve, and our own mention in that order. This junior yearling, when she came out in class here, she just gave me that wow factor. That depth of rib, that strength, that power. When you stand in front of her, she's got that wide muzzle, but then when you stand in behind her, she's got that angularity. She goes over my December calf with that depth of fore rib to her. A little more heart to her when you're standing in the side profile of her. A little cleaner through her head and neck than our December calf. Our December calf over our winter yearling, just maybe the way she tracks out on those rear legs today over this heifer that's actually springing up here. But you gotta love the power and the strength on the winning yearling here to pull her ahead it for our momentum over the other ones that depth the rib to her. And this is the way you wanna see that our breed come forward here with that power, the depth of rib. Congratulations once again to the breeders and exhibitors. Congratulations to the junior champion of the Southwestern Ontario Jersey Show. Entry number 45, your first place junior yearling, shown by Emma Finch uh, with Glenholm River Ecstasy, exhibited by Glenholm Jerseys. Congratulations, you'll be receiving $150 from Huronia Jerseys. The reserve junior champion is our first place December calf. Entry number 13 for Matt Lang and Quality Holsteins with Besley Kingsdale Scout Tiptoe. And honorable mention goes to our first place intermediate yearling from Walker Bray Farms with Painside DBR Petty. Congratulations, everyone. We will now be moving into our junior herd class. We would ask all exhibitors to bring their group of three animals to the ringside for a presentation to our judge, Kevin McGriskin. Well, Murray, that was uh, pretty darned exciting. And uh, Heifer, the Glenholm Heifer that had been junior champion at the Ontario Summer Show has continued her victory march 
through the uh, into the fall now as well, the river ecstasy heifer, 4-H uh, heifer for Emma Finch as well. So I guess we'll see her again in the 4-H championships. And uh, the Besley Kingsdale heifer in uh, reserve for Matt Lang and Ari Eckstein. And they're uh, looking quite serious over there as the pictures are being taken. Just there, a little bit of a smile now, that's Ooh. better. And uh, so Judge McGriskin had such a consistent group of heifers out there. Intermediate yearling, uh, Walker Bray owned, and Painside Bread was, uh, was the, uh, interme was the uh, honorable mention. So really uh, just such incredible quality in those 49 heifers that were out there today. Now we've got some junior herds assembling here, and we're expecting, I assume, a fair number of them. About five, probably. Mm -hmm. Russell, that uh, intermediate yearling from uh, Walker Bay, she's starting to spring up a little bit. Uh, probably won't get it done in time <laughs> for a big show uh, coming up in November, but uh, should be uh, about five months fresh uh, next spring in, <laughs> in April. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. She will be probably still in the intermediate yearling class at the Royal, as opposed to the milking yearlings. And, uh, yeah. Always good to see these consistent groups of heifers in the. Uh, in the junior herd classes as well with their. So we've got, uh, I know Willow Creek is here, the Osbournes, and I think we've got Charlin in here, Bright on Farms, uh, Glenholm, and Polar would be my educated guesses. So five, that's pretty darn decent. That's 15 out of the 49 heifers that are here in breeder's herds, junior breeder's herds. And who's the sponsor here? Oh, Huronia again. No, sorry, I'm reading the wrong page. Upper Grand Veterinary Services. Talk to Rob Ham Swackhammer and his team. And Rob, of course, is a Jersey breeder now, having purchased Mark McFedrin's Mullen herd. And uh, as, uh, he and Alex and their family, uh, his son Alex and their family, farming out there near Rockwood and still heavily involved in Upper Grand Veterinary Services as well. Yep. So a lot of dairy clients there. Just a uh, tremendous family, the Slackhammers. Oh. Uh, Rob is a great supporter of uh, youth activities as well, and, and we're very, very pleased to have Upper Grand um, support the Jersey Show here today. Um, and I haven't had a chance to visit the Slackhammer farm since they purchased that, but uh, coming ahead in leaps and bounds and, and things look uh, very interesting in some of their posts they put on uh, social media and uh, yeah, well, at the moment whoops And I think the Frankens, nope, maybe. We're just going to double check on the second here. Frankens are in third at, with uh, Paul in. And I think it's uh, Richard and Teresa Osborne that are second in this class. Sorry, Brydon in second. <clears throat> It's good to have advisors around you who know what they're talking about. So there we have Glenholm right at the top there, Murray.
Before uh, I uh, give my reasons here, I think everybody should uh, look at these uh, five tremendous groups here, even this uh, last place group here. It's a tremendous group, but I'd like to take all three of them home too, like they're well balanced all the way through. So let's give the readers a round of applause. It's a tremendous job. For our group on top here, you've got the junior champion effort here, then, then you've got two other mature efforts that have got a lot of uh, strength and power to them uh, on uh, the walk on a nice set of feet. Like, she looked a little bit once in second, just on that maturity. The more mature, the more mature, the more mature uh, through the body confirmation, and this beautiful dairy group we have in second. Second and the third is that dairy quality. The worker runs through a little pain through their head and next. Than the, the group we have in third. Third over fourth is that depth of rib. When you see it back from just the more power all the way through the depth of rib or the angle of the early group we have in fourth. Fourth over fifth, uh, just the way the rump structure is a little wider through their pins, little, uh, they handle their legs, just set them up a little bit better than the group in fifth. But like I said, this is a tremendous group here too, well balanced, uniformly right through. Congratulations to the Greeks. Exit for a while. Just a reminder to our Twitters, we're looking for the following individuals Carly Brooks, Sydney Kingdon, Denise Sales, Clarissa McCallum, Michaela Hill, Alicia Wank, Kenzie Gates, and Emma Finch. Champion 4-H calf, sponsored by our very generous uh, sponsor John Deere uh, of Canada, and, uh, John Deere Canada, and who are also sponsoring the live stream here today. So, uh, looking forward to seeing the young people strut their stuff out in the class. We've been seeing a lot of that. The award is sponsored by John Deere Canada, and if we have a representative, if they could come to the pitcher area, that would be fantastic. Following the champion 4-H uh, calf class, we will complete our showmanship competition. So we have a class of peewee showmanship, junior showmanship, and senior showmanship, and a champion and reserve showman. And we plan to start the milking senior yearling class at 1230. So immediately following this, we will move into our showmanship contest and we will start with the peewees, those exhibitors under nine years of age.
So again, folks, on your screen at the moment, you're seeing the contestants for Champion 4-H CAF, and that's noted uh, in the, uh, the strip at the bottom. Uh, that's what we're watching here, and we've got some really high-quality heifers that have been uh, 4-H projects this year, heifers that have been well up in their classes uh, during the show itself, uh, the open show and uh, now these 4-H members are center stage and in the limelight uh, of, the, uh, of the showing at the moment as well. Kevin McGriskin, of course, continues to be doing the judging uh, that way. Lots of great work here being done this morning by a team of volunteers. Uh, Julie Cunnington, I know, has been working hard over in the ribbons area. We've had Jennifer Peart Anderson, who is, I believe, the chairman of the uh, organizing committee for this show, is, uh, has been doing some great announcing. We've got Virginia Warwick uh, from the former Genesis uh, jerseys, who's uh, doing a lot of work, too. And Kevin is going to tell us some comments right now. I uh, pulled out three here for my 4-H champion. Got, uh, I think she was third prize uh, December calf here in class. And then my uh, second prize uh, senior calf. And then uh, my first prize junior yearling here. Let's give these 4-H uh, exhibitors a round of applause for coming out here. I'm gonna go out and select my junior champion. Reserve, and I'll mention in that order. This junior yearling, she was a junior champion overall in the Heifer Show. She just shows me that overall balance, that strength, and that depth of rib. She goes over my December calf on that depth of rib and a little more, little more heifer all the way through her midsection. My December calf over my September calf, just having a little more strength, tracking a little nicer in those front, front feet, a little straighter, and just uh, the way she tracks it on those rear legs over this deep rib heifer we have for our own mansion. Congratulations once again to these 4-H exhibitors. Congratulations to our champion 4-H staff shown by Finn.
Everyone's favorite class of the day, the Pee Wee 4-H showmanship class, is taking place in the ring now. These competitors are, have not yet reached the age of nine and are not in 4-H. And they are, this class is sponsored by Royal Bank of Canada. And we have three contestants today in our class for Judge Kevin McGriskin, Sienna Osborne, Bella Sales, and Eaton Osborne. And congratulations and best of luck to everyone. Yep, everything is working now. class will be next. Junior showmanship is for those ages 9 to 14 years of age. This is, uh, as Jennifer was saying, this is one of the most... Uh, appreciated and uh, and favorite class of an awful lot of people uh, when they're watching these peewee showmen and they are doing an exceptional job today they've really got these calves under control they're speaking with judge kevin uh, mcgriskin and he's having a real good chat with them about their uh, finesse in the ring and we've got uh, two osbornes and one sales in here so some deep uh, jersey roots because the uh, osbornes would go back to hondrick breeding as well uh, Willow Creek jerseys, uh, formerly at New Hamburg, and here's Kevin with some comments on this great class. It's uh, nice to see the future of the show competitors here. I didn't really work them real hard here, but uh, I'll tell you one thing, that these two on top here, they do a tremendous job. Both of them lead them really good. I just prefer the way the one, uh, young boy gets out ahead of his calf a little more. And uh, like I said, it didn't really work them super hard, so it could have been a little. Third place, Sienna Osborne. Thank you so much, guys, for taking the time to train these calves and present them to our judge. Next in the ring will be our junior showmanship class, ages 9 to 14 years of age, and this class is sponsored by John Deere Canada.
starting out with the show competitor here in first. I just prefer the way keeps the nose down a little more when she's out leading, just the flow of her animal compared to the comp competitor in second. Second over third, when you come in, in the ring there, she pays attention to the last calf in the ring, pays attention to the, where the judge is, and when the last calf's in the ring, she turns around and shows her calf instead of uh, sidestepping still compared to the one in third. Third over fourth, I've just had in that head carriage, the head up at all times, the neck nice and straight when the judge is in behind over the competitor in fourth. Fourth over fifth is letting the judge see the animal all the way through. When the judge is out front, she steps away from her animal, just showing a little more clearance from her calf to the leads person over the one in fifth. Fifth over the one in second. These are a little closer placing here on these end two, but I just prefer them to learn how to lead their calf a little more out in front and setting up their animals nice and square with the and the whip proper and those rear legs. Congratulations to the uh, to the show competitors. Congratulations to our first place junior showman, Carly Brooks. In second place, Eva Sales. In third place, Hannah Sales. In fourth place, Sydney Kingdon. In fifth place, Miranda Morrison. And in sixth place, Keegan Hill. Congratulations. Now entering the ring are our senior showmen, ages 15 to 21. And this class is also sponsored by John Deere as well.
Okay, and uh, we will have the junior first place, first and second place juniors, and the first and second place seniors compete for champion showman. So we would ask Carly Brooks and Eva Sales to be waiting on the ringside to do champion showman after this. And again, this class is sponsored by John Deere. And just a reminder to our spectators and exhibitors, we will be starting at 12.30 with the uh, milking senior yearling class. So we will likely have a short, short break for lunch and uh, you can go enjoy uh, the food vendors here at Ancaster Fair.
So we've just had uh, the placing of our senior 4-H showmanship, and that will lead into uh, grand champion showman and reserve. And uh, Emma Finch, who's been having a really fun day showing the uh, junior champion in the open show and the junior champion female in the 4-H show, has now um, won the senior showmanship contest as well. The five really talented young women out there competing. Here's some reasons from Judge McGriskin. Another uh, very class of show competitors here all the way down the line. But I think these top three come out quite handily here. They have full control over their animals. They're aware where the judge is. They step away from the calf to let the judge to see them all the way through. But for me, when it comes to showmanship, you've got to set up a heifer correctly evenly in those front feet and having them look good at all times. And I think this competitor here on top here just does that a little bit better. She doesn't fidget with her animals much. And she, when she touches her, she touches her in the right spot over the one in second. Second over third, on just the, the fluent of the animal in sync while she watches and walks. But both of these are very, very close placing, all three of these. But I just prefer the way she sets her heifers up with her legs out from it, underneath her compared to the one in third. Third over fourth, a little easier placing here. Very fluid on the halter, steps away from her animal, letting the judge see her all the way through, bringing that nose down to show me that length of neck to her over the competitor in fourth. Fourth over fifth, I'm just setting her animal up, aware of the judge when the judge walks around, switching those feet when the judge goes to the other side. Congratulations to these show competitors. Congratulations to Emma Finch on being first in our senior showmanship class, followed in second by Michaela Hill. In third place, Kenzie Gates. In fourth place, McKenna Morrison. And in fifth place, our added entry of Corinne Bateman. And we will now have our champion and reserve show people to come back to compete for Champion Showman, sponsored by John Deere Canada. So our first place Junior showman, Carly Brooks. Our second place showman, Eva Sales. Emma Finch, our first place senior, and Michaela Hill, our second place senior, will all be coming back in the ring to present their showmanship skills to Judge Kevin McGriskin. You are heavily involved in that. Well, Russell, it's a, uh, an event that's uh, close to my heart, very passionate about it, uh, very fortunate to have a tremendous uh, group of volunteers and an uh, organizing committee uh, that are of the same uh, fruition as myself, mm -hmm. you know, are passionate about our youth and uh, especially about the TD Classic uh, We've been away since uh, 2019, so we're very excited to get back at it, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, an exciting show uh, coming up at the 100th anniversary of the Royal. So it's more than just getting back to the having a classic show at the Royal. It's the celebration of the 100th anniversary at the Royal. So uh, kind of a, a double uh, double dose of. Uh, 
coming back and also being part of, of history. I mean, the 100th anniversary of the Royal is something extra mm. special this year, and uh, we're very excited to be part of it, uh, and we're looking forward to uh, welcoming a number of 4-H uh, competitors from across the Canada to uh, be part of our classic this year. We're unsure about numbers at this point in time. Uh, that upwards of 375, you know, uh, available before, but uh, we'll talk more a little bit yeah. more about this as uh, we listen to Kevin give his reasons. So. There's uh, only four here competitors out for champion here, but I think uh, all four of these do a great job when you set them up. They set their animals nice and square. They know the, the faults of the animals. And when the and aware of the judge as he walks around, but for me, these two senior showmen, they do a great job setting them up. Let's congratulate them for showmanship. And then down to our junior, congratulations. Let's give these guys a round of applause. Congratulations. For my seniors, I'll give you a set of reasons. They just set them up nice and square, like I said, all, all the way through um, over our junior. Nothing against the junior. Just maturity, that's about it, of uh, setting her animal up nice and square. But she does an excellent job, too. Congre Congratulations to Emma Finch. She's having a banner day here today. She was uh, the champion 4-H uh, showman today, receiving, receiving an award sponsored by John Deere, followed by a reserve champion showman, Michaela Hill, and honorable mention champion showman, Carly Brooks. Congratulations to all our competitors. Thank you to our judge, Kevin McGriskin, and his ringman, Doug Green, for uh, putting on some miles this morning. And we will give them a brief recess, and we will be back at 1230 with our milking senior yearling class. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, folks, uh, we're just going to be uh, stopping here. There is a break before the milking female classes start. They are going to start at 12.30 Eastern, and it is 11.42, according to my phone at the moment. So about 45 minutes from now, we'll be back with the milking classes in the Southwestern Ontario Jersey Championship Show. Yeah. Uh, a lot more exciting things to happen this afternoon. Also, uh, we'll talk more about the Raw, we'll talk more about the TD Classic, and uh, the new stalling. Yes, yeah. we're going to have uh, Ari Eckstein is going to come and talk to so, us about uh, that. So we're very excited about that. We have a, uh, a display model here behind us. Uh, we'll get a chance to get that on the live stream as well, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who will be very interested in having a look at that. So uh, we'll be back in about 45 minutes, and uh, enjoy your lunch hour, and we'll see you at 12.30.
Attention exhibitors in the barn, this is your 10 minute warning for the milking yearling class. We will start the milking yearling class at 12.30. So this is the 10 minute warning for the milking yearling class. Please bring your cattle to ringside. Thank you.
Our milking senior yearling class is about to enter the ring. Uh, the milking yearling jackpot $100 sponsorship is sponsored by Royal Bank of Canada. And it's my pleasure to reintroduce our judge for today, Mr. Kevin McGriskin. Kevin and his wife Becky and their children operate Kentville Holsteins and Jerseys in Dufferin County. Kentville Holsteins is a master breeder herd and they're currently milking 40 animals. Throughout Kevin's judging career, he's judged many 4 H shows, county shows, and breeders' cups. And he has also clipped uh, cattle and fitted uh, show strings across uh, numerous continents. And he's very proud to say he's clipped multiple Grand and Supreme Champions at World Dairy Expo, the Royal Winter Fair, and International Dairy Week in Australia. And... Uh Two gentlemen for helping us out. At this time, we'd like to rethank our sponsors for the show today. Our general show sponsor sponsors are as follows: Air Farmers Mutual Insurance, Farm Credit Canada, Jersey Ontario, Select Sires Canada, East Gen. Our jackpot hundred dollar class sponsors today are Norwell Dairy Systems, Royal Bank of Canada, Trout Nutrition Suregain, and Weaver Crop International. Extra class and championship sponsors, Dortmund Brothers Farm Equipment, Huronia Jerseys, Tavata Tavistock Veterinarians, Upper Grand Veterinary Services, and Wellhaven Farms. And uh, the exhibitors were able to enjoy a breakfast this morning courtesy of BW Feeds in New Hamburg. So thank you to all our sponsors. In addition, we I uh, would like to thank John Deere for sponsoring the live stream and our youth show. And uh, most importantly, Ancaster Fair for taking, taking the time to invite uh, this show to their fair. They're providing prize money at the fair for exhibitors as well. And this is an amazing facility that we get to use here. So thank you to Ancaster Fair for the first and hopefully many more years of the Southwestern Ontario Championship Show.
championship show and right in front of you now is bride on wc triumph she is a unique webcam uh daughter and out of the colton dam and she is being exhibited by bride on farms murray number 74 these are the milking senior yearlings well now this is uh, an interesting milking senior yearling exhibited by Valhose farms Bred by Morning Mist, so bred, bred by uh, James and Kathy Mason and their family. She's a Joel daughter, uh, exhibited by Velthouse Farms out of an impression. And uh, we certainly never mind seeing Velthouse Farms investing in some jerseys. They actually bought part of Guernsey this year as well, out in the uh, Valley Gem Sale as well in Wisconsin. And uh, so uh, Justin is showing a lot of good interest in uh, in a variety of uh, in a variety of breeds and uh, a lot of qualities come out of that Veltois farm. So Justin's a really well motivated young man. And now we have Alex Dolson leading in Galaxy Renaissance Estelle. She's a daughter of the Monopoly legendary senior year, so currently in the ring. The Malcolm Senior Yearling class is sponsored by Royal Bank of Canada. And the jackpot winner in this class is won by Rydon Farms with Rydon's WC Child. This is your first call, visitors, for the summer two-year-old. And we will follow a summer two-year-old. As, as we were mentioning there, we had Alex Dolson with uh, Galaxy Renaissance Estelle. Uh, bred by Alex and Angela, they're young farmers over near Rockwood, Ontario. Rockwood address, and uh, they brought this cow here. We may or may not. I guess we're maybe only going to have three. Hey, it's three is correct. So three, is, uh, three is it. And as we noted, the Royal Bank of Canada was sponsoring the jackpot prize in this uh, class. So uh, also uh, during the lunch break, had a chance to wander around the uh, exhibit area and have a look at some of these uh, young cows uh, and uh, getting ready. And I'll tell you, we're in for a treat this afternoon. There's some beautiful other young females out here that uh, are going to be paraded before our judge uh, Kevin McGriskin this afternoon. And uh, Kevin's uh, been pretty decisive all morning on what he was wanting in uh, in his heifer lineup. So. Uh, Looks like he's going to do the same right here in the Melking Senior Yearling class. So. We're hopeful that he will uh, make us look good again, Murray, because uh, when we made comments during the classes, Kevin would often uh, say something very similar in the uh, reasons that he gave in each class. So uh, we're hoping that continues. We were complimenting him on his ability to somehow channel what we've been saying up here at the table. Either that or maybe there's a fighting chance that we know a little bit something about what we're watching here. So he's going to give us some reasons on this uh, yearling class with the bright on animal at the top of the class. This is a nice way to start out the milking classes here. We got uh, three nice balanced cows here. Starting out with my cow on top, she is my best starter of the class. She shows that overall depth of seam all the way through. That uh, walks out on a nice set of feet and legs over our recently fresh cow. I like to see a little more seam all the way up top here to get her ahead of the, ne uh, the next one, but I just love the, the power and strength to this one that's recently fresh. But she goes over the one in third, just being a little more balanced to her rear quarters than the one in third, but this is a tremendous cow, uh, another great cow in the end here. It shows that overall dairiness, the silky hide to her. Uh, congratulations to the breeder. Congratulations. 
Our first place blocking blocking yearling is the entry from Brighton Farms, Brighton Webcam Triumph. The statue will also be uh, Best Butter, Best Bread Melt, and our hundred dollar jackpot winner from RBC Worldwide. In second place, entry seventy four, Morning Miss Joel Niederbaum. And in third place, number seventy five, Galaxy Renaissance Estelle. So I guess now we're going to have the summer junior two-year-olds enter the ring, and we are hoping and expecting to see five animals in that class. Uh, Weavercroft International, again, being generous in their sponsorship of the jackpot prize for this class. <clears throat> and from what I understand, some interesting animals in this class, with some of them coming in with a little bit of history behind them. Good history behind them. I just want to privilege to announce some results from our heifer show this morning. Our premier junior breeder for this morning's show goes to Charlotte Jerseys. And our premier junior exhibitor goes to Glenhall Jerseys. So congratulations. And boy, we've got some here. Murray just leaving the screen right now, or still on the screen, is Glenholm Gentry Charity. She's number 77 on the uh, harness, and she's a gentry daughter from Glenholm Jerseys in Bolton. Uh, she's being followed in line by number 78, uh, Charlene Jerseys and Brian Waldrick. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, glad to see Brian and his family involved at the show this year. Uh, Charlene Perennial Nadi Natsky, uh, she's a Rapid Bay getaway daughter, uh, bred at uh, Charlene Farms and owned in partnership with uh, the Waldwick family from Hickson, Ontario. I guess they call it Woodstock. Woodstock, yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, 79 uh, with Denise uh, Sales on the halter is Bright on BA Embrace. She is a Rapid Bay Black Apple and she's out of a PNV Brace Embrace, which is a viral daughter. Uh, sold through the one of the uh, Avonlea sales down to Ernie Kuchner and Terry Packard. Matt Lang moving into your screen right now with the Quality Farms entry, Glen Home Casino Cash. She's an Elliott Renaissance Casino daughter, Regency Casino daughter, um, owned by Quality Hosteens and Matt Lang on the halter. Matt has a uh, Recent bit of history, he was yes. involved representing Canada at the Young Beauty School in Belgium. So uh, congratulations to Matt and his team uh, doing extremely well over at that competition just recently in Belgium. Wave the Canadian flag well. And number 81 with Jeff Stevens on the halter is K Manor Video Bacardi. This is a cow that was sold through the uh, Summer Spectacular sale in June and now owned by Blue Creek Jerseys of Wallenstein. The summer two-year-old jackpot, the hundred dollars, is sponsored by Weaver Crops International. And the winner of the summer two-year-old jackpot in this class goes to Bright On Farms with Bright On Black Apple and Grace. Congratulations. Murray, if this is any indication of what we're gonna see, and we have scrolled through the barns and picked out uh, a lot of really delightful cows in every string that's here. Uh, it's going to be an exciting afternoon here as we move through the milking female classes, as Kevin Griskin moves through the milking female classes. Um, it's delightful to see these young cows, still pretty young, I guess they could be no more than 26, 27 months of age and in lactation for a while. Again, some of them will probably make the trip to Toronto yep. in five weeks' time. That's you right. Can That's us. right. Yes. Uh, yeah, these are summer two-year-olds, born first of June. So uh, I mean, they were just two years old a couple of months ago. And that is one of the uh, factors of the Jersey breed. I think the word is being precocious, or you know, being uh, able to calve young and, and get started. And that's always been a a breed trait: good fertility and. Uh, the ability to uh, to get in calf at a fairly young age, 
especially when they're well-growing young cows and uh, get get going at it. So one tens are not unusual in the uh, in the uh, Jersey breed, and maybe even one nines. But certainly, uh, 22 months of age is not unusual for a Jersey to be calving. Okay. Uh, I think uh, also we're seeing a bit of a hybrid version of what the two-year-old classes are going to be at the Royal in uh, yeah. just five weeks from now, or six weeks maybe uh, by the time we get to the Jersey show. Um, three classes of milking two-year-olds here at uh, yeah. the championship show and I believe we'll have four uh, when we get into uh, all of the milking classes at the Royal. So uh, as we move into the fall, uh, by the way, welcome to the first full day of fall. Okay. <laughs> at, uh, so I thought late. yesterday was enough of a transitory <laughs> shock, Murray. Murray. Uh, officially didn't happen till nine o'clock <laughs> last night. So, uh, well, that's why it was so cold last night at nine o'clock yeah, when so, I was getting back to uh, a hotel room. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, after the Guernsey show. Yep. So <clears throat> our first polls are being made, and uh, Blue Creek has come to the top here with their entry, uh, as Russell has just uh, mentioned, uh, followed right along by the Quality Farms entry uh, bred at Glenholm. And uh, that first one is by St. Lowe Video, who's a CMAX bull who's been very, very popular. He's a bull that's our uh, most acceptable production and, uh, and also really good type, too. He's got a very high type rating, Murray. And he's a viral son, and he was bred by a guy called Frederick Saint Laurent at Montjoly, Quebec. Who's also bred a bull called Nuance, who's been uh, pretty darn popular as well. Yeah, and the uh, I believe the uh, the quality farms one, and I guess Kevin's going to give us some reasons. So I'll save my. Oh, no, no, he's uh, uh, he's going to have another look. The quality farms one, uh, the Mellows were asked to provide some animals for a Holstein Canada judging conference, and they had this young cow that they sent over there and uh, to Quality, and Quality decided that she didn't need to go back home. They said, we will add her to the Quality herd, and here she is. Lovely, lovely. Look at these udders on these cows. The veination, or the veinage, whichever way you want to describe it. Uh, I prefer veination. Yeah. <laughs> veinage, veinage is a word that I think I came up with. That's, that's closer to vintage. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want to watch that yeah, phrase. Yeah. But, uh, so we've got uh, the a Tremendous mammary systems. I mean, you, you get a, the side profile of these young cows, and then you get a look at these brew udders on these, uh, you know, Basically, just 24 months old. The oldest one, just 24 months old. So, uh, yeah. That would be four. So yeah, five uh, summer junior two-year-olds. That's June till the end of August. Uh, four there. And, and five. Yep. Yeah. So those, uh, that's our class, and Jennifer will soon be telling you about them, and Kevin is now going to describe them to us and see if he uses some of our phrases. Best starter Best on the first tiles. Just while we're waiting for the ribbon presentations, if uh, you have a look at your screen right now, what a beautiful shot of those udders that we've been talking about all through this particular class, and uh, you, you can get a great view of all five udders there right now. There's these uh, summer junior twos here pulling out here, coming around. Great class all the way down the end. This is a real milky, class, uh, milky cow down the far end with a high wide rear udder. Uh, tremendous class all the way down. But for me, this ain't the biggest cow or maybe the longest cow, but when you look from part to part, she is my best udder. She has a high, wide rear udder. She's got that depth of rib right through when you stand from the side profile over the long dairy heifer we have in second. But for me, when you stand in behind them, 
There's just more heifer when you get in behind with that rib structure, that high, wide spring to her, high, wide rear udder. And she uses that strength and power right from her muzzle all the way through over the one in second. Second over third on the veination of her fore udder and the rear udder. The quality of udder to her, the way her fore udder just attaches into her body wall over the one in third. Got to love the frame on the one in third. She's got that high chine to her, that balance to her, depth of rib, strong top to her. She's using those feet and legs on her over the one in fourth. Just a little cleaner down through her bone of her leg. Just walking out a little nicer on those set of feet and legs than this high, wide rear udder cow we have in fourth. Fourth over fifth on that loin structure. Just having her thorough placings ahead of her a little better. Just a little stronger on top over this really milky cow we have in fifth. Congratulations. Congratulations. In first place in the summer two-year-old class go goes to K Manor Video Bacardi, exhibited by Blue Crick Jerseys of Wallenstein, Ontario. The first place entry is also Best Stutter. In second, number in second, the number 80, the entry from Quality Farms, Glen Home Casino Cash. In third place, entry 78. And also best spread known, Charlin Perennial Naughty Natsky. Entry 77 was fourth, and entry 79 was fifth. Now entering the ring is the junior two-year-old class. In this class, the $100 jackpot is sponsored by Trow Nutrition Sure Gain. Do you want to do this one? Oh, well, you first one, yeah, the first one in the ring is number 82. She's Glen Home Joel Apache. She is the daughter of none other than Guimo Joel, bred at Brenby Farms and now owned by Diamond Home and Jack Malia. So that's with Jack on the halter. 82, 80, 83. 83 is the Brian Wilder Country Perennial Velocity Vanessa from, uh, I guess they are a Tavistock yeah. address, yes. not a Woodstock. <laughs> She's an Arethusa Jake Velocity daughter, and Brian Walder is on the halter. 84, with Jeff Stevens on the halter, is Kentville Imperial Chocolate Chip. She's by Rock Alley Impression, and Jeff Stevens actually owns her. So Jeff is exhibiting his own animal here today. And our fourth and final entry into this class is from Willow Creek, Jersey's Willow Creek Video Night. A St. Louis video again. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had one in the last class, and... Uh, Lo and behold, another one in this class. You're out of a velocity, so. So that is our four entries in the junior two-year-old class. And you'll uh, see them as they parade around the ring. A Joel, a velocity, an impression, and a video. And the video's out of a velocity, so a little doubling up there. Pretty sweet class. For, it doesn't matter that there's only four and that they are four impressive young cows. <clears throat> These uh, with this uh, junior two-year-old class are born between March and uh, the end of May 2020, so a few months older than the previous class. 
a little more time to develop, you know, develop get the belly back, yeah. you know, and really get into that milking mode. But uh, all four of these heifers have that wet look to them, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they look like they know what they're here for. You know, they're, 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 they're made right, but they know what the business end is all about, and that's making milk. And, and that's what makes money for everybody is uh, milk in the tank. But, out of beautiful frames and milky dairy cows and, and capacity to their others, but carry well above their hocks. So. It's going to, uh, and there's uh, these cows are a little different from each other, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, what appeals to Kevin. And he has made an initial decision. And it looks like number 84 with Jeff Stevens on the halter and a Joel mother on her as well. So <laughs> the influence of Joel is far and wide in the Jersey breed, and understandably so. Look at the front end on this Cal Murray, this uh, junior two year old as she uh, strolls into her place in, this, in the lineup, in the preliminary lineup. Well, actually, you could be quite complimentary of the front end on all four of these cows. <clears throat> and uh, the first one by Rock Eller Impression, he is son of uh, the Eronia Connection Crispelman, a former Royal Winter Fair champion and reserve champion. And uh, So four pretty exciting, slightly different, but very exciting young cows. We do, uh, we're going to have, hopefully, an interview with Jacob Lux, the general manager of Jersey Canada here, perhaps during the junior three-year-old class. We've got six or seven animals in that class, so we've got Jacob and Phyllis Harrington from the office here, and we'll uh, attempt to have a conversation with them. Before long, Kevin is giving me uh, having a second look and getting things in order. And it is fascinating, uh, as you were saying, Murray, to see the way these animals develop as the glasses get older and. Body capacity just obviously expands, and of course, capacity of udder would expand too. With, uh, my guess is that Kevin is going to be really complimentary of the quality of animals in this modest size class. Oh, and a little switch here. So I think this class has maybe given Kevin a bit of a challenge. There are yeah. some different kinds of different styles here. of yeah. cows. Yeah, exactly. See them one way, see them the other way, put them back. You know, uh, it's uh, all part of the judging uh, regime to look at them different ways, and and uh, it'll be interesting to hear his reasons yeah. when he comes to talk about them. Uh, the middle pair seems to be the ones that have uh, uh, given him the a most little uh, challenge uh, in challenge terms of uh, determining where they were going to end up. Yeah. Looks like Kevin is ready for reasons on the class. Our ribbon presenters are out there. Officials are the taking the places. So. And we're underway with reasons on the class. got four really nice uh, junior twos here. Uh, my cow in first here, she's got that beautiful shelter, that uphill front end, that power and strength from her muzzle all the way back through. She uses that depth of rib. She is my best editor in class here. 
She's got the veination all the way through. She uses that, like I said, the rib, that depth structure, the depth of rib all the way through, especially in that fore rib over a really milky cow we have in second. Second over third, a little closer placing here. I flip flop them a little bit better back and forth here. But for me, just this cow is just walking a nicer set of feet and legs, a little dairier all the way through. But I do grant the one in third having a higher, wider rear udder to her and a little more power than the one in second. Third over fourth, just on that this, uh, seam all the way through, all the way up high, the height and width of rear udder over a really balanced cow we have out in fourth. Congratulations. The results of the junior two-year-old class are as follows. In first place, exhibited by Jeff Stevens, Kentville Impression Chocolate Chip, also best stutter in the class. In second place, entry number 83 from Brian Weldrick, Perennial Velocity Vanessa, also the best spread and owned. In third place, entry 85, Willow Creek Video Night, also the jackpot winner of the $100 from Trial Nutrition Sure Game. And in fourth place, entry 82, Glen Home Joel Apache, owned by Dave Diamond and Jack Melia. Now in the ring, we have our senior two-year-old class. Okay. I'm so excited about this class. On the screen right now is number 87, well, 80. between 80, 86. Let's talk about the uh, cow here, Willow Creek RVV Snow White. She's another daughter of River Valley Victorious, a bull we've mentioned previously today. And she's out of a Paul Lynn Premier Snowy. So we've got some influence from the hills as well on this cow shown by the Osbournes of Willow Creek. Oh, really? And our entry that's leading the parade is Charlene Perennial Sangria, uh, exhibited by Charlene Jerseys and Brian Weldrick, a uh, River Valley Magic Genie, and I believe that's the first that we've heard the Magic yes. Genie name yes. here today. So, uh, out of an Ayatollah. So, uh, yeah, and uh, I think an Ayatollah from the famous Snow family at uh, Ryland Jerseys, because it's J F, which uh, J L would be Jordan and Lucas Reamer. And Ayatollah and Sophie probably spells the Snow family if, uh, if they we're talking about uh, uh, anything to do with Brylin or JL. Well, certainly uh, a well-known breeding establishment in the Jersey breed, Brylin Jerseys, uh, have had some notoriety worldwide with uh, yes. some of their breeding, and especially at uh, one big show that happens at uh, Madison, Wisconsin, yeah. did extremely well. Uh, 2019, I believe. I think it was, it was uh, Vincent Sophia. Yep. Sapphira, sorry. Mm -hmm. Pierre Boule would be showing that cow. Yep. Yep. And uh, so we've got just two, but two really nice ones in here as well. This is the uh, senior two year old class, and again, Tro Nutrition, again, sponsoring a jackpot prize here. So they have been spectacular in their uh, support of this show. 
along with other great sponsors. <clears throat> During the next class, the junior three-year-old class, we're going to have a visit or an interview with uh, both Jacob Lux, who is the general manager of uh, Jersey Canada, and Larry Sherdown, who is one of the extension workers and a past president of Jersey Canada. So those two gents are going to come up and uh, do a little interview over here at our microphone. We look forward to that. Kevin having a final look at these two really nice young cows. Just to make sure he's happy with the way he's got the two of them lined up. And I would suspect these are both second cavalry. So. Uh, yes. In fact, they should be, and I'm sure they are. Because, yeah, they're three years of age, so they would be fresh sometime in the summer or... Yep. Very well, yeah. very early fall. No, it would be the summer <laughs> since, we're, since we're just in our first yeah. full day of summer here. First full day of fall. Right? Yeah. fall. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so they just turned three years old this month. So uh, yeah. I was just saying summer because I wanted summer to continue a while longer, Mary. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Kevin is leaving them that way with the uh, Charlene and Perennial together. I'm reading that first count. But he's giving them a really, really good look. Which is what we've become used to today is that he is very, very thorough and yet timely in his judging. What's the, what's the old saying? He who hesitates is lost? Is that what? Uh, obviously not the case here today. Kevin has been very decisive in, mm. in his decisions. And but I think he's telling us this is a close placing. <laughs> it looks like it's... And I'm sure he's going to say that he wouldn't mind having either one of them at his place. <clears throat> and again, both very dairy, milky looking cows, but slightly different in style. Yep. Which, uh, so now we're going to hear what was on his mind while he was placing this class. Good 
Please you have a representative from Trout Nutrition Sugar Could you please come to the picture area and present, present some of these uh, cash awards? Thank you. Well, we're going to start off the class with number 88, and her name is Brydon Tequila Dandy. She is a tequila daughter, and she's out of a premier dam. Just give them a second here. Is the happen? We are going to be during this class having an interview with uh, Jacob Lux and. Uh, Larry Sheardown, who are intimately involved in Jersey, Canada. Coming in the uh, view on your screen right now is the number 89, Glenn Holm Andreas Valour. She's a daughter of Sunset Canyon and Andreas, exhibited by Glen Holm Jerseys Incorporated. Jump in the catalog to number 91. She is Edgley H.G. Shania. She is a SB hired gun, Jade hired gun daughter. She's exhibited today by Quality Holsteins and Joel Bag, led by Matt Lang. She's followed in line by the Bride on Farms entry, Bride on Dragon Scarlet. A golden Topeka Dragon daughter, uh, bred known by the Bride on Farms Incorporated. Following her in this really nice class of junior three-year-olds is 93, Charlene Joel Exact, another daughter of Guimo Joel, shown by Charlene Jersey's The Kingdon Family from uh, Forest, Ontario. And she's followed in line by another Charlene entry, and I see they're keeping it in the family. Charlene Jerseys and Lee Simonton from out in Western Canada, Rapid Bay Getaway Daughter, uh, bred by Charlene Farms and Sandy Kingdon on the halter. And so, Murray, I'm going to go round up Jacob and uh, Larry and bring them over to the microphone here. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have two uh, distinguished gentlemen with us here today, and uh, we're going to ask them a few questions about Jersey Canada. First off, we have uh, Jacob Lux, who was uh, relatively newly minted as the general manager of uh, Jersey Canada in early April out in Saskatchewan, Jacob, and I note that your hair is still uh, nice and dark, so uh, the job hasn't... <laughs> Hasn't overwhelmed you just yet. The GM spread though is coming. <laughs> the GM spread, you look down below the neck. <laughs> Can you tell us, Jacob, about how things are going at Jersey Canada? You had some interesting information a week or two ago about registrations. Oh, that's right. Yeah, uh, things are going well. I think I got uh, eased into it a little bit this summer. Is traditionally a little bit slower. People don't want to hear from us as much. But now with show season in full swing and uh, <clears throat> and work in the fields done or being finished, we are really busy at the office, uh, and that's reflected in our registration numbers for August, because I think what Russell was mentioning, where we had a record record number of registrations for the for the month, I think it was over 1,200, and uh, every, I mean, it's been steadily, if you look at the charts, it's been moving up for some time now, um, but that's one's in particular, uh, 
outperformed every registration up until uh, maybe the early 60s, 62, 63. Yeah. We saw that precipitous drop off. So when you're having your discussions with Just you... Just a reminder to our exhibitors in the barn that our next class is going to be a champion. So we'd like to call back the first and second place animals in our previous milking classes for intermediate champion. Thank you. Um, what, when you're having discussions with the board and your staff, what are, what are they attributing this uh, growing demand for jerseys to? I, I did speak to uh, to everyone involved, I, and especially I spoke to our registrar, Rachel, who's the main uh, interaction between producers and jersey owners, and that's kind of also the reason I... We'd like to take a moment to say uh, a few thank yous to some people uh, helping out at the show today. Big thank you to Mark Eisner and Russell Newman for our live stream commentary. And the lecture would be possible with the uh, expertise and efforts of uh, Bruce Sargent and Mark Boyd Productions. So thank you, Bruce. We'd like to thank Clarissa McCallum for taking the ring shots, the ring photos, and also posting on Randy Ontario's Facebook uh, live so that people can see who are with us today. We'd like to thank Doug Green, our fan, for staying up our judges for the first scan. We'd like to thank Julie Cunnington for assisting with uh, practice photos. Okay, Jacob, you were saying yeah. that Rachel had some uh, insights well, for you. I spoke to her especially, and so, I mean, you can't discount, if you zoom way out, you, you can't discount the rise has been steady, I think just due to breed improvement and uh, overall profitability of jerseys and, and getting the message out, but mostly getting the message out through a more grassroots means, which would be actual jersey owners. But when you zoom in, you're seeing, um, and Rachel mentioned it as well, you're seeing the effect that it's had in the recent institute. Uh, an expanded extension program. Um, so we have uh, staff in Quebec and uh, three now in Ontario. Mm -hmm. And we really revamped the program for the first time mm -hmm. in recent history. And, and Rachel echoed the sentiment that they have had an enormous impact in capturing registrations, capturing uh, you know maybe a late registration, or getting an earlier registration than maybe would end up being a, a later non-registration, uh, as well as a couple of, you know, moratoriums or catch-up uh, mm. catch numbers of registrations and finding people out there that were maybe on the fence about registering, uh, talking about the benefits of registration. And I think that's reflected, kind of added a turbocharge to our to our already uh, climbing numbers. And it's really um, into the fall, it's going to be interesting to see what that looks like. And, uh, so that is a beautiful segue into the second gentleman that we have here, uh, known, I'm sure, to many well, certainly the established Jersey family, and also now a lot of New Jersey folks as well. Larry Sheardown uh, from the master breeder Rexley Herd at Chomburg, Ontario, a past president of uh, Jersey Canada, and now an extension worker. So, Larry, tell us about your experiences out in the field and what you're learning. Well, summer has been, uh, well, busy for everybody in the fields, of course, but uh, I think for me, the one thing that stood out this summer is the number of cattle that are Jersey cattle. I mean, all move all kinds of breeds but jerseys especially that have been moving from herd to herd and one thing we're seeing uh, in the field is larger numbers requests for 15 or 20 in a group which mm. in the previous previous used to be a, a couple at a time uh, exactly. now our buyers are looking for larger groups for a couple of reasons health is a big one for them uh, some of them are startup herds or they have a they might have a herd of of Holsteins or other breed and want to add a group of 15 or 20 to you know to supplement their SNF or their butter fat tests, yes. their milk components is a big one. And uh, ease of handling, once they get them, they find the, all those other things that we know that the jerseys can do in terms of feed efficiency and their ease of handling and their, their curious nature, of course, is, is, a, is a big one. Uh, lots of kids and women that love working with Jersey cattle when they get them because of their, their nature. Uh, it's not all size, but just that... that uh, competitive nature that they have as well so 
there's a multitude of factors. All of them come into play, I, I think. But yeah, I, I, some whole herds that have that have moved, some people that are moving mm-hmm. on. But we've had uh, absolutely no trouble at all in finding new homes. From you know, you uh, literally within weeks of someone saying, "Hey, I'd like to move my cattle," uh, finding a new owner, moving them across the province or sometimes out of province to other uh, other new herds, and and the owners are really happy they get a large group and and some very productive cattle and nothing but good news stories for the most part in terms of where they're going. Well I know with you two we could talk all day about the excitement in Jersey ranks but we're going to have the microphone is going to start being used again so we want to thank you both for telling us about excitement and enthusiasm and growth in the Jersey breed. We appreciate you both being here. Thanks Russell. Thank you. This is a tremendous class all the way down here. You look at this milky cow and then she's got that high wide rear udder. But to get her ahead of these other ones on top there, she just needs to get a little more rib structure, but she, she pays the bills. The one on top here though, she comes out quite handily. I looked at her once here and then I kind of ignored her because I knew where she was going to be. She's got that depth of rib, that frame, the strength, and she's got, she is my best udder of the class here. She uses that length of body, that height of width of rear udder, that snugness of fore udder over the one in second. Second over third. This is a little closer placing here. This is a little shorter couple cow. But for me, she just has a more of a desirable shape to her rear udder, snugger in her fore udder than the long dairy cow we have in third. I do grant the cow in third having a little more femininity. Dairy quality through at her frame, but I just like to see her a little snugger, especially on that left side of her forearder, a little more balanced to her rear order to get her ahead of the one in second. Third over fourth is just that dairy quality, the balance right through, correctness of hook to pin over a milky cow we have in fourth. Fourth over fifth, if that height and width of rear order, when you stand behind these two, Having that height of width right through the rear udder and a little snugger and longer of her fore udder than the one in fifth. Congratulations to the readers. Oh my. Oh my. Look at that. In, in first place, entry 89, Glenholm Andreas Velour, exhibited by Glenholm Jerseys. This is also your best setter in the class and best bred and owned. In second place, entry number 93, Charlene Joel Exact. In third place, entry number 91, Edgley Hired Gun Shania. In fourth place, entry number 92. In fifth place, Entry number 94, Charlene Getaway Vacay, which is also our jackpot winner from uh, Sure Game. And in sixth place, number entry 88. We now have our first and second place animals returning back for Intermediate Champion. The Intermediate Champion award is sponsored by Wellhaven Farms. And the winner of Intermediate Champion will receive a cash prize of a $250. So thank you to the Wellhaven family. Coming back in to contend for Intermediate Champion, our first place milking senior yearling, Bride on Webcam Triumph. In second place, Morning Miss Joel Jagerbaum. Our first place summer two-year-old was entry from Blue Creek Jerseys, Blue Creek Jerseys of K Manor Video Bacardi. And in second place, an entry, entry from Quality Farms, Glen Home Casino Cash. Our first place junior two year old was an entry from Jeff Stevens, Kentville Impression Chocolate Chip. 
And in second place, Perennial Velocity Vanessa. Our first place senior two-year-old was exhibited by Charlene Jerseys and Brian Weldrick. Charlene Perennial Sangria. And in second place, Willow Creek Victorious Snow White. And the first place junior three-year-old, Glenholm Andreas Valour. And in second place, Charlene Joel Exact. These are your milking females in contention for Intermediate Champion, sponsored by Wellhaven Farms. And Murray, an exciting group of younger cows uh, out here for this uh, Intermediate Championship. <clears throat> Jennifer has just introduced them uh, to the crowd here and also to the folks uh, on our live stream as well. And uh, it's going to be a really, really interesting class. Again, Kevin seems to have a lot of consistency in his judging. As we mentioned, a lot of decisiveness in his judging. And boy, these udders are something else. A tremendous tribute to the uh, breed and the progress that's being made. An interesting discussion with Larry and, uh, and Jacob from Jersey, Canada about uh, the things that are happening <clears throat> within the breed and the growing demand for jerseys and uh, Larry saying that a lot of times uh, the people are now looking for 15 to 20 cows as opposed to two as an experiment, you know. They're uh, saying we really need to do something about our butter fat level or our solids non-fat ratio. So here we have this collection of animals to be tabbed as intermediate, reserve, and honorable mention. In that order, as the judges <laughs> say. Certainly been a uh, very entertaining uh, young sire classes, or mm -hmm. young uh, milking classes here today. Uh, enjoyed watching all of them. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk much about this uh, Young cow that's just moving into line yeah. here in a, in a she, few uh, minutes, but uh, she had some good moments in Lindsay in July. <coughs> She's uh, won her class and then went further than that. Too. Yeah, had a uh, chance to see her at lunch hour standing yeah. on the pack, and uh, she's one of those uh, young cows that makes you just say, "Whoa, mm -hmm. back up and take a second look." I mean, uh, gotta love this cow. If if you're here in person, you're getting a chance to see her in the flesh. But those of you at home that haven't seen this cow, she is outstanding, but uh, we're not putting any words in Kevin's mouth at all. Uh, he's the man that will make that he, decision. He can't, he can't hear us from no, here. he can't, no. but... Uh, uh, she but, is, she is, uh, it'll be it'll be very interesting yeah, anyway. Yeah, she's yeah. the product of work that started with Stuart and Zilla Mallow back in 1937. Wow. Uh, the uh, grandparents and great-grandparents of the current generations, well, parents too, with Bob and Elaine, still involved at, uh, at Glen Home, but with uh, Carol and her son uh, Curtis and uh, Bruce and uh, members of succeeding generations of this Jersey passionate family at Glen Home in Bolton. So Kevin's going to give us some comments here about these animals that he's pulled out for his final pick. So far it has been a great uh bunch of milking classes right now uh, that we've had here before. Not to take much away from the ones that are just stepping up along the wall there. Tremendous udders, tremendous balance of cows. But for me, I think these four came to their top, top of their classes quite handily. We got our junior two here that's got a shell of a frame to her. Beautiful depth of rib to her. Then we got our senior twos here coming out. There was only two in the class, but like I said, both of them can stand a bit of heat. They got that balance, great udders to them. And then we have our junior three. A lot of power, strength, high wide rear udder. I'm going to go out and suck my intermediate, reserve, and our own mention in that order.
for me is Jim, and I'm just doing the three shows on overall scale, frame, online regarder. She's using that scale of rib. That got four to four rib, range of air with a rib, over this very, very now we have for reserve. And like I said, in this class, it's only a two and a half, these are two tremendous cows. Same in the class, I just go with the very body, the way she just tried to set the most rib bags. I just prefer the teeth from front to rear placing. Or we want to have a mention now, but like I said, tremendous bunch of jerseys. Congratulations. Congratulations, the winner of the Intermediate Champion Award sponsored by Wellwood Farms and winner of the $250 is your first place junior three year old, Glen Holm Andreas Galore. Followed by Reserve Intermediate Champion, the first place senior two year old, Charlotte Perennial Sangria, and Honorable Mention Intermediate Champion, second place senior two year old, Willow Creek Victorious O. White. Congratulations to all the winners and exhibitors of these beautiful young cows. Next in the ring will be our senior three-year-old class. The senior three-year-old class, the $100 jackpot, is sponsored by Norwell Dairy Systems. Just while we're getting some uh, photographs taken here, Russell, uh, you and I were chatting offline about uh, just what Kevin might do. And uh, certainly when you you see the three animals out there in, in the present uh, view that uh, our online crowd is getting, uh, tremendous, tremendous young cows in the Jersey breed. And uh, it's really a tribute to the breeders and also to the breed itself for having uh, this kind of young individuals that are got a bright future ahead of them. Uh, we were guesstimating what uh, Kevin might do, and he did exactly what we were talking about. So, uh, uh, yeah, well. it, it was reserve an honorable mention. We're so so close in class that uh, it was pretty hard to separate the exactly. two of those out. So. Those those two were <clears throat> well slightly different. From, well, different from each other. They were very close placing for him. Yeah. And I think what he did made absolutely perfect sense, yeah. uh, given the, the animals he was working with. And, uh, he did comment, too, uh, that he only looked at that cow that is the immediate champion once in her class <laughs> and knew where she was going to end up in that class and never never faltered, never wavered in that belief, either. <clears throat> well, it's... Always nice to have one like that come into the show. It just makes the, the rest of the day go very easy. So. Yeah. <laughs> just while we're waiting for some more photographs over in our presentation area, we will be heading into the senior knocking classes, starting with our senior three-year-olds. Uh, there will be uh, three in that particular class. And... Uh, once all these photographs have been taken, we will uh, continue with our show. Just, Russell, just while we have a moment, mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about the Royal Agricultural yeah. Winter Fair, and one of the new things at the Royal this year is all brand new stabling in the yes. uh, in the cattle barn this year. So uh, we're very fortunate here at the uh, Ancaster Fairgrounds to have a sample of those uh, a new stabling uh, right behind you and I, just where we're sitting here. So uh, it will be on display uh, again tomorrow for the full show. show. And I'll be in Stratford tomorrow, and I'll have lots of pictures for the uh, exhibitors uh, that will be part of the Stratford show tomorrow. We've had a lot of questions from TD Classic uh, Chaperones wondering what the new stabling was going to be like, and it's it's really an opportune time to get a first-hand view of uh, of this new stabling. Uh, and answer the looks like it'll be. question now. Yep. So we've got uh, number 95, and sorry to interrupt there, no, Marie, no but problem. that's uh, Whiskey ahead. Hollow Joyride Cosmo, owned by the legendary Whiskey Hollow Syndicate and Heritage GRD. 
She is by River Valley Joyride, and she's exhibited today by John Free, part of the syndicate. Uh, next in the ring is uh, Curtis Ruda and Adrian Franken's uh, exhibit. She's the Glenholm Giller Tribute, a Shamrock Giller daughter. Mm -hmm. Now that's a name from the Blast past. Blast from the past, it? yeah. Must have been some semen at the bottom of a <laughs> nitrogen tank somewhere. Oh, I think, think it was. I think it was a planned mating. There I'm sure. Go. The uh, and then uh, we have the third animal in this three animal class is Brydon V Snickers. She is exhibited by Bright on Farms, the Sales family, uh, Master Breeders in Holstein's jerseys, jerseys twice, Holstein's once, and she's a River Valley Victorious daughter. So we've got, uh, once again, that River Valley program has just been kicking them out in terms of uh, both the heifers and the cows that have been on display here today. So there's just, there may only be three, but once again, uh, Kevin has got his. He had his work cut out for him in the two animal class, so uh, uh, one extra here. And uh, again, these cows showing a lot of development now as they uh, potentially could be third calvers. And this is, uh, this is exciting. We have one, two, three, four, five individual classes before we have a, uh, I wonder if we have a senior champion. I guess reading the catalog would be a good idea. And we do have a senior champion in reserve, and then we'll follow that with grand in reserve. Very logical progression. So yeah, again, presumably all three of these cows are probably third cameras. I think it's Charlotte Perney. Yes, perennial sangria. Oh yeah, she's uh, magic genie was at select suckers. <laughs> and she's not by perennial; she's by magic genie. Yeah, River Valley magic genie. And then on the mention. Uh oh. Uh, a Victoria's daughter, yeah. Willow Creek <laughs> RVV, Snow White, Snow White, one word. Willow Creek, one word. Yes, uh, two words. And Snow White is one word. Presumably with only one W yep, from the look of it. Anything for you. That's very good uh, nail polish, too. It's classy. Mine's all the shit Am I muted? <laughs> We've got a, a preliminary lineup here. The, uh, the Joyride Daughter in first at the moment. Judge <laughs> McGriskin has had a preliminary look at uh, this class side by side, uh, heading out for the final turn. Uh, leading off is the Whiskey Hollow Entry, Joyride Cosmo, a Whiskey Hollow Syndicate, and Heritage GRD. 96 coming along in second place at this point uh, from Curtis Ruda and Adrian Franken, and the Bride on Entry, number 97. And I would believe, Murray, this is another class where many people, if not everybody, would be glad to take all three and, or any one of these cows home. 
just tremendous. Um, the class doesn't have to have 15 into it, you know, to be impressive. And uh, boy, these are three powerful cows. Dairy strength and with the mammary system and just capacity and that milky look to them. So uh, definite credit to the breed. And it looks like it's official in that order. Kevin is uh, doing some close observations and telling the uh, leads people what he's uh, what he sees today. And but three real milky, outstanding young cows, and they're just senior three of them. Too. We've got uh, three senior threes here, uh, three good quality senior threes here. We've got uh, different stages of uh, lacta uh, lactation and calvings here, but uh, the one on top here just shows me overall dairy quality, openness and dairiness of rib right through over the one in second. I just prefer that churn to her rear udder over the one in second, just the way she handles her thorough placing. Uh, over the one in second. Second over third, a little closer placing here. The one in third is a third caver, but I would like to see her rear udder just hiked up a little more, a little snugger. And I prefer the one in second. It's got a longer forwarder, but I grant the one in third having a stronger top, which I do prefer in an animal. But today, just I just love the forwarder on the one in second. She's got that long attached forwarder to her little higher and wider of a rear udder than the one in third. But the third prize cow is a is fresh three times, and she is a milky cow. She's got a great attached udder, a well dairy cow. Congratulations. The results of the senior three-year-old class are as follows. In first place, entry number 95, Whiskey Hollow Joyride Cosmo, the best setter of the class and also best bred and owned. The second place entry, number 96, Glenholm Giller Tribute, owned by Curtis Ruda and Adrian Franken. And in third place, the entry from Bright On Farms with Bright On Victorious Snickers. Now entering the ring is the four-year-old class. The four-year-old class, this $100 jackpot, is sponsored by Norwell Dairy Systems. So, Russell, we're back online again. Interesting comment from uh, Kevin uh, in that last class. Uh, the bride on entry is a third caver, and she won't be four years old until the 12th of October. October. So, uh, kudos to uh, Bride on and three calves and look that good and be just a senior three year old. At, uh, and three weeks short of her uh, fourth birthday. So, uh, talk about efficiency and <laughs> reproductive efficiency for sure. And, exactly. Uh, Speaking of Bride on Farms, here's number 98, Bride on Colton Achieve. She is a Chile Action Colton out of a Jade and out of a member of the Virginia family. Uh, important family at Swiss Bell. This cow was champion at Paris Fair and a nice jersey show two, three weeks ago as well. And we have uh, two exhibits in the four-year-old class. And there's one entry in the five-year-old and the mature cow. So just uh, be there at uh, the side. But there's uh, not many entries in the classes. Thank you. And the bright on entry is being followed by the entry from Willow Creek. Uh, Willow Creek Joel Benji, a Guimo Joel daughter, again a uh, four-year-old. Um, only two entries, but again, it's going to be a challenge for Kevin. Um, mm. Well, both these bulls are known to are good type daughters that have. Uh, really good udders as well and that is exactly what we're seeing the uh, Joel daughter that's very typical of the 
veination and shape and uh, maturation of Joel's uh, daughter's udders. And the Coltons, they're just terrific uh, type cows and been a lot of successful show cows by Colton. And uh, this would be the case with uh, this cow that's out here as well. So again, there may only be two, but boy oh boy, talk about quality. Of course, the Brydon cow would be a cow that goes through uh, robot milking as well with their transition a few years ago, well, a number of years ago now, to robots. They milk about 100 cows through two D. Lavelle robots there. And, uh, that transition has worked extremely well at Brydon. Uh, these, yes. these cows have hardly missed a beat. Uh, uh, was there early on in their, uh, when they just made that transition and the cows had adapted to that uh, robot system so well? And there's been so such an ad advancement made in robot milking. Yes. That, uh, there's only uh, two four-year-olds here out in this class here, but both of them are tremendous cows here. They've got a... The first price cow here, recently fresh, I think he said three months. She's a young four-year-old. She's born in February. She's got a beautiful shell to her, open dairy quality to her. And when you get in behind this cow, she's just showing me all a little more power, especially in that spring of rib and that depth of rib from behind, and a little higher, wider rudder over this cow that's been milking since December. Cow milk in December. She's got a hard top on her, very long dairy frame to her. Another tremendous cow. Congratulations. The results of the four year old class are as follows. In first place, entry number 98 from Brydon Farms, Brydon Colton Achieve. Uh, Colton Achieve was also the best setter in the class, best bred and owned, and the winner of the $100 jackpot sponsored by Norwell Dairy Systems. And in second place, the entry from Willow Creek Jerseys, Willow Creek Joel Benji. sister to Monica. They had a cow called Brydon Centurion, Virginia. And she was an incredible brood cow. She was a real embryo producer as well. They sold, she made 200 embryos or more in her lifetime. Wow. She Substandard pictures. <laughs> yes, is that <laughs> motion pictures? <laughs> Over there, you want to grab him? Yeah. Um, behalf of your role, I'll bring him over. So. Because he could talk even uh, maybe during that senior. Yep. yep. I'm muted. We have uh, one entry in this five year old class. She is Charlene Velocity Nexus. She is started by Arethusa Jade Velocity a bull that's part of the uh, Rapid Bay Sire program, and she is exhibited by the Kingdon family of Charlin Jerseys, Forest, Ontario. Truly Western Ontario. We just have one entry in our five-year-old class today. Uh, entry of Charlin 
Tracy is from Boston City, Texas. She will be the winner of the $100 jackpot from Marwell Jerry System. And we'll give our judge a free pass on the ribbon selecting and she can get the red ribbon in this class. We will ask for our entry in our measure dialogue class to come forward, followed by the lifetime component class. And then we will move to senior champion. I'll go get the red There is only one in this class, but what a beautiful shell of a cow. Spent that on top for an end of the area, but let me do it in silky hide. Really, the most count of treasures. Gotta get out there. Coming? Yes, he's going to come during the senior so champion. There we go. Says mute. Coming into the ring, Brydon at Goldie. She's a hometown urban attraction daughter, and look at the rear other on this cow. Wow. I think this is a milk cow. We will have the lifetime component class as well. We will have our $100 jackpot sponsored by Marwell Dairy System. We will have the lifetime component class sponsored by My, my. Now, if that isn't a picture of a Jersey cow in full bloom, I don't know what is. Just, again, uh, quality, just from, the, as they say, the tip of her nose to the tip of her tail. We are going to have uh, Ari Eckstein, Eckstein is going to join us during the selection of uh, Supreme, or uh, Senior Champion Female. And we'll talk a bit about that stabling at the Royal Agricultural Winter Fair. That uh, you've mentioned a couple of times already. And I would just bet that Denise Sales enjoys showing a cow like this. Now look at the whip. Yeah. yeah. There's only one in this class, too. They got five navigation now. All your area, kind of library, beautiful home structure. Now, congratulations. First place mature cow is Bright On Attraction Goldie. First brand owned and best stutter in our mature cow class. Now entering the ring is the lifetime component class. To enter into the lifetime component class, you need to have total solids of 4,500 4, kgs or more combined of fat and protein. And the winner of this class receives a $100 jackpot sponsored by Norwell Dairy Systems. We will move after, we will immediately after the lifetime component class, we will move into the senior champion um, competition. So please bring your first, first and second place entries. entries from senior three-year-old on back to contend for a senior champion, followed by grand champion and then breeder's herd.
Could be. I think we should be by yeah. now. Yep. Here we have the uh, component class, and 102, there are two entries from Brighton Farms here. 102 is Brighton Spinster Energy. She is by a homebred bull called Brighton Headline Spinster. And I'm guessing she's out of the evening family because her dam's name is Everlast, an E name at Brydon. And in a second, Marie, you can tell us about the second entry yep. here. Also from Brydon Farm, Brydon Val Silk, a daughter of all ends, Louis Valentino. And again, she's a uh, 2014 model. This car is uh, mm. eight and a half years old. And. Uh, I think this is a phenomenal class when you, you've got yes. 4,500 kilos of combined fat and protein. These are, are animals that have stood the test of time. They have produced and reproduced and obviously calved on a regular basis. And uh, just a pleasure to see two cows of this caliber in the lifetime component class. Well, and yeah, and uh, both of them passing past eight years of age. So they are, they are workers, they are beautiful cows to see still, but they have proven that they know how to work and make money for their owners. And a fair bit of that life, if not all of it, would have been in uh, the robot situation at Brydon. As we were mentioning, it's been a while since they moved that way. <laughs> so I think Kevin has, has decided between the two matrons, um, oldest cows in the show today, and certainly very worthy of being here as well. <clears throat> he has made a decision. Yeah. It'll be the uh, spinster energy cow. We've got uh, two production cows here. This cow on top here. She's had seven calves. She's got that same height and width as the cow that's had five calves. She's showing that she could track her on the ring like a young cow. And you got to admire that in the breed, how a cow can get around seven calves, probably 10 years old or something like that. The cow in second, not to take much away from her. She's in a production class too. She's had five calves. She milking since December, another ultra dairy cow with a beautiful, correct rump structure. I think it's just great to see longevity in our breed. Let's give it a round of applause to the breeders. Results of the lifetime component class are as follows. In first place, entry 102, Brydon Spinster Energy, your best setter of the class and also best bred and owned, and the $100 jackpot winner from Norwell Dairy Systems. And in second place, Brydon Valentino Silk. Now entering the ring is our senior champion candidates. The senior champion award cash award of $250 will be awarded to our, our senior champion animal and then following senior champion we will move to grand champion and we will conclude our show today with the breeders herd competition We'd ask the representative of Dortmund's Brothers Barn Equipment come to the ringside to present the Senior Champion Award. The contenders for our Senior Champion Award today. In first place, the senior three-year-old, Whiskey Hollow Joyride Cosmo, exhibited by the Whiskey Hollow Syndicate. In second place, Glenholm Giller Tribute, exhibited by Curtis Ruda and Ad Adrian Franken. Our first place four-year-old, Brydon Colton Achieve from Brydon Farms. Our second place four-year-old, Willow Creek Joel Benji. 
a first place five-year-old, entry number 100, Charlin Velocity Nexus, our first place Mature Cow, Bright On Attraction Goldie, our first place Lifetime Production Cow, Bright On Spinster Energy, and the second place Lifetime Production Cow, Bright On Valentino Silk. Following the selection of the Senior Champion Award, we will have the Grand Champion of the Show contest. Thank you. Well, we have an, uh, one more interview to do today, and it is my pleasure to introduce to the uh, live stream Ari Eckstein from Quality uh, Holsteins and, Qualities, jerseys. and Jerseys and Quality Seeds and uh, just a man of great quality. Ari, one of the things we want to talk about in particular is some of this new stabling that's on display here at Ancaster Fair for the uh, uh, opportunity for exhibitors and our 4-H exhibitors tomorrow to see it. Can you tell us a little bit about the evolution of sure, this? Or? Sure. So, yeah, the Royal is really proud to uh, to introduce the new stalling uh, this year that will be down there, and, and, and the Royal has been vested in investing uh, a lot of money to improve the area for the exhibitors and uh, the new stalling was something that's been discussed for a little bit and uh, it's uh, it's pretty exciting I think it's gonna it's gonna you know give a really good new appearance to the Royal mm. and it's gonna be really user-friendly for the exhibitors and I think that's really important and you know without the exhibitors we don't have a show and, and so keeping them happy and and uh, keeping it a good place to to have cattle and to have a show was really important to the Royal and I guess would look good to the public as well, Absolutely. what they're going to see of it, because it's very attractive. I know we're talking about something people can't see, but uh, we've had a good look at it, and it's really attractive, professional, sturdy yes, looking. Very sturdy. Yeah. Yes. Metal, is it? Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so that'll be in effect, and this will be the first time back since 2019. That's right. We're pretty for the, excited. The Royal. We're pretty excited to have the Royal again. and. And, and the, the Royal is committed. I think it's really important to note that the Royal is committed to a long-term show there. This is, some people say, we're, you know, is this the last year? Well, it's, it's far from the last year. The, the, the Royal, again, is very invested in keeping all these shows going and, and uh, committed to that. So we look for a uh, long-term showing at the Royal Winter Fair. Now, if someone doesn't have the chance to get here to Ancaster, and that could apply to quite a few mm -hmm. people, uh, would they best uh, route to be to talk to someone on the Dairy Cattle Committee, the breed reps that mm -hmm. are on that Dairy Cattle Committee? Would that make the most sense? Or yeah, you're if talking they want about to... the stalling. Yeah, so the stalling, yeah. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. I mean, you need just to go on social media, too. There's yeah. there's all the measurements are on the Royal Winter Fair site. Uh, we are intending to have it a, a lot more shows yeah, here until the Royal. And I believe there's a big beef show at Lindsay this summer. The Dairy Quality. Sorry. Let's give these guys a round of applause for a tremendous show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I pulled out my first and second four-year-olds here. They show that overall balance, that great, well-attached stutters, and my first prize yeah. age cow that's showing longevity, yeah, quite something, right? mm. quality, milky cow all the way through. This four-year-old, she's well put together. She might not be the biggest cow, 
but from part to part, she's very correct. She walks out on a great set of feet and legs. She's got that overall spring of rib. She uses that depth and uh, spring of rib when you get in behind her, the height of width of rear rider over my reserve. My reserve over my age cow. She's having a little snugger of her forearder and just trocking out just a little nicer on those passions than my honorable mention senior champion. Once again, congratulations to the breeders and exhibitors. Yeah, quickly. Uh, Jennifer, could you hold off for just a minute or two? Okay. Okay, Ari, you were making some comments yeah, so about where people could see this sure. new stabling. Sure, so just to finish that off, there, there, there's a big beef show with Lindsay this uh, weekend, and so the stalling will be there as well. We're going to try to bring it out to Autumn Opportunity in the fall, and, and uh, so there's a number of people here too, I think, have taken pictures of it, and I, I believe mm -hmm. Jersey Canada will be posting it online and, and definitely on, on uh, the Rail Winter Fair site. So um, all the measurements and everything that I think everybody needs to to know to, to make the proper displays will be uh, will be quite evident. Yeah, planning on how many stalls they're going to have based on their entries. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, it looks great, and and I think you made a vital point about the fact that it proves that the Royal Winter Fair is really committed to a long-term relationship with livestock producers and having competitive livestock shows at the Royal as well. A absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Good. Thanks, Ari. Congratulations to our senior champion, recipient of the $250 cash prize from Dortmund Brothers Barn Equipment, Brydon Colton Achieve from Brydon Farms, Paris, Ontario, reserve senior champion, Willow Creek Joel Benji from Richard and Teresa Osborne of Willow Creek Genetics, and honorable mention senior champion, our mature cow entry from Brydon Farms, Brydon Attraction Goldie. We would now ask our contenders for Grand Champion to come to ringside. The Grand Champion Award is sponsored by Tavistock Veterinarians, and the winner will receive a cash prize of $250. And following Grand Champion today, we will have our Breeders' Herd um, class as well.
Currently in the ring now, we have our grand champion contenders here for our judge, Kevin McGriskin. We'd like to thank Kevin for all his work today, along with his uh, ringman, Doug Green. And I neglected to mention earlier, uh, thanks to Andrew Hunt of the Bullvine for also taking wonderful pictures as well that we can review later after the show and for people watching online. Coming back in our class, we have entry 89, Glenn Holm Andreas Ballour. And we have our reserve intermediate champion, Charlene Perennial Sangria. And our honorable mention intermediate champion, Willow Creek Victorious Snow White. We have our senior champions, Brydon Colton Achieve. Our reserve senior champion, Willow Creek Joel Benji. An honorable mention senior champion, Brydon Attraction Goldie. And please join me in a round of applause for all these beautiful cows. Very So, Marie, there we are. The moment uh, that we've all been waiting for. Yes, there's a breeder's herd after this class, but um, here we have. One of the most exciting moments of any dairy show is the selection of Grand Champion. Well, Russell, uh, it's certainly been a pleasure to watch the individual classes, but this is certainly a sight to behold here right now. Uh, our intermediate champions, uh, the younger uh, milking individuals, uh, tremendous in their own right, and then followed by our senior champions coming in, uh, just getting into line now. But uh, uh, I tell you, this has been a wonderful show that could have stood a lot more competition. Yes. I know people are busy, uh, but uh, certainly been a pleasure to watch this show and watch these individuals, and especially watch Kevin McGriskin. Uh, mm. In his assessment of all of the individuals and listening to his readings, it, it's been just an enjoyable part of the day today. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, Kevin's comments as he's heading towards the microphone <laughs> right now. So uh, let's listen, listen in and yeah. see what Kevin's got to say. What a tremendous show. Let's give these guys a round of applause. When Doug and I were talking about what we're going to do here for the final, and I said he just kind of said, you want to just line them right up the middle? And I just kind of said, yes, because I think it's a great idea to show all six of them off. you got your intermediate champions and your grands. And when you walk around these cows, they show that ultra dairiness, height them with the rear udders, and walking out on a great set of feet and legs. I'm going to go out and select my grand, my reserve, and my arm will mention in that order. You know, it wasn't easy when you're looking at these cows because they're all tremendous cows. But for me, when you're breaking down a cow, each part's got to, you got to look at if they're correct. And when I look at this four-year-old cow here, I look at her loin structure, I look at her pasturings, and I just prefer that over my reserve. She just carries her top line just a little more crisp 
just a little stronger through our pasture. I do grant the cow in reserve having a little depth, more depth to her fore rib, a little more depth to her rear rib. But when I see this four year old out here track and she tracks so nice, so tra- straight in those tracks, for me, I just had to go make her a grand champion. For reserve, or my own mention, is that depth of rib. The depth of fore rib, the depth of rear rib over our beautiful cow we have for reserve. Or sorry, for her own mention. Congratulations once again on the breeders and exhibitors. Congratulations. The 2022 Grand Champion of the Southwestern Ontario Jersey Show goes to Brydon Farms, Paris, Ontario with Brydon Colton Achieve and the winner of the $250 jackpot from Tavistock Veterinarians. Reserve Grand Champion of this year's show, Glenholm Andreas Valour, exhibited by Glenholm Jerseys. An honorable mention Grand Champion today for Charlene Perennial Sangria. Congratulations, everyone. We will now have our Breeders' Herd contest. The winner of Breeders' Herd receives a $300 cash prize from uh, other brand veterinary services. Well, Murray, mm-hmm. we Russell, it. It is. Just, uh, boy, there are three super spectacular cows there, eh? In this... Uh, mm-hmm in this grand finale of the individual classes. Selection of these uh, cows. And there is a uh, uh, best letter of the show, and it will be my grand cow. And the reason for that is just the snugness of four otter and the height, the width, and shape to her rear otter over the rest of the bunch of cows uh, you see here. Congratulations on best otter. Well, if this hasn't been exciting, I don't know what is. Uh, to and to have results like this as well with these three cows in the center of the ring. For achieving the best setter of the show, the best setter of the show award was sponsored by Air Farmers Mutual, and they received a hundred dollar cash prize for that uh, that award. Well, Russell. Uh if this is any uh, indication of what we're going to see in uh, next month in uh-huh. November, it's a prequel of, of <laughs> some excitement on Saturday, the 12th of November. Uh, in a place called Toronto. We're going to ask Paula to have a representative from Paula C's to come to the picture area for the presentation. Bring your breeder and exhibitor, please.
Well, Murray, for anybody that's around uh, Ancaster, the Halflinger pitch classes are going to start about twenty quarter to three this afternoon. So, uh, <laughs> so do we need to move to the next building? Or yes, they they're going to be or? up in the big ring up there. Uh, they used to be in an outdoor ring right uh, to the uh, to the right here. But here's the breeders' herds being uh, evaluated. One, two, three, four. four. Everything that was entered, I guess, yep. is here. And uh, this indeed is the grand finale of this. Uh, Super terrific Southwestern Ontario Championship show. It'll be fun again. It's always it's always different. great to see breeders' herd classes. Uh, you know, it's a, a reflection of the program back home for all of these breeders. And and, and uh, somebody has got the nod. Yep. Looks like. Friends from Paris, Ontario. Looks like there's right on. Here, like the Jersey uh, Breeders' Herd Classic Series here at the Great to have that. I'd like to thank Doug Green too for being out here organizing things. It makes it a little easier when you're uh, got a guy that's been there, done that, and uh, working together with him. Um, let's give him a round of applause. He does an excellent job. And then I don't want to repeat myself, but the exhibitors, because if there wasn't the exhibitors, there wouldn't be a show, so let's give all the exhibitors and breeders a round of applause. They did an excellent job. And then when, when you're talking about the exhibitors and breeders here, you got these four tremendous groups of three here. Like, every one of them I'd take home and milk in my barn, trust me. But at this group on top, they had the high, wide rear udders to them, especially the two cows on the end. Good, great dairy functional cows. They're going over the ones in second. Just when you get in behind them, they got a little more pop to their rib, a little fuller through their front ends than the ones in second. Not to take much away from the group in second. They have that high, wide rear udders to them. They got that beautiful rump structure. They're going over the group on second, over, or second over third on that dairy quality, the silky hide to them over the group in third. Third or fourth. It's just showing me a little more medium suspensory all the way up top. The group in uh, fourth, they're just losing their seam, especially on the young cow right now, a little more uniformity through their udders. But, like, once again, congratulations. It's been a wonderful show. Thank you to our judge, Kevin McGriskin. He did a great job today. The results of the Breeders' Herd class are as follows. Winning the $300 jackpot from Upper Grand Veterinary Services, Brighton Farms, Paris, Ontario. In second place, the entry of Richard and Teresa Osborne with Willow Creek Jerseys. In third place, Charlene Farms. In fourth place, Glenholm Jerseys. It's my privilege to announce the winners of the Quality Seeds uh, Chairs for Premier Breeder, Brighton Farms from Paris, Ontario. And the premier exhibitor also receiving a quality seeds chair, Bright on Farms, Paris, Ontario. Congratulations. This concludes our show for today. Thank you again to Ancaster Fair. And we hope to see everyone out for the second edition at Ancaster Fair in 2023. Have a safe trip home and thanks again for coming. Well, there's three guys on one page. So. <laughs> So, Marie, that's, uh, Bruce has commented to me that we need to make our final statements here quickly as people will be uh, getting on to other projects as well. But what an exciting day. We've just been complimenting Kevin, Mag er, yes, Kevin McGriskin on his work today. Yep. And uh, just a super, super day, an yeah. inspiring day. Yeah, it's, a, it's certainly a pleasure for me to, to share this uh, opportunity with you again, Russell. Uh, we did it 
high class thing and uh, certainly a, a good chance to reunite and get back together again and uh, we look forward to some great things. You're going to be part of our team at the Classic coming up in, uh, in five weeks. In so five weeks, I keep reminding us. everybody. So, uh, again, thanks so much for the opportunity of being here. It's been a pleasure to watch the show. And, uh, again, uh, we'll see you somewhere down the trail. Exactly. All so right. uh, right. have a great day, everybody. And thanks. thanks for everybody who has watched during the yeah. day today as well. And thanks, Bruce, for making it all possible. Yep. Thank you, and have a good day.